So, good morning, everyone. It's a new round. It's round number seven. It's 10 o'clock. It's even, yeah, it's 10 o'clock, exactly. Anna is going to play her seventh round. We can see her young opponent is sitting there. Anna is facing Koi Nguyen. I'm not sure how to pronounce it from Belgium. He's only 12 years old, but he has been doing very well. He's performing about his rating. So Anna is having two and a half points out of six. This is the seventh round. She's playing with against the player who is a little bit lower rated, about what is it, about 150 points, but it's a young player and it's a very much upcoming player. And he is sitting there waiting for Anna to arrive. And I am Grandmaster Pia Crumley. I am Anna's mother and I hope I can guide you in this game. Try to explain the ideas, the reasons why the player choose to play in one way or another. So Anna play in Menorca Open. There are about 360 players in the two groups. Anna play in the A group. She's seated around 190 among 270 players. And she's having two and a half out of six, exactly like her opponent. And she will be coming. It looks like her opponent is waiting for Anna to come. But now he starts the clock and it's absolutely right to do so. The organizers said that you can start the clocks. The arbiters have said it. I mean, because the arbiter decided it's time to start the clock and it's even two minutes past 10. So he started the clock and Anna's clock is ticking, uh, normally not ticking, but uh, it's it, the seconds are passing. There's no problem at all to be late. Here we have Anna and <laughs> yeah, and I just hope uh, she played D4 here and this is very, very expected uh, move. This is absolutely Anna's favorite uh, move to play so and here comes knight f6 d4 knight f6 and that is one of the two main moves i would say after d4 and there are like i said about 270 plays in the group anna and her opponent is playing in after six games, six rounds, there are only two players with five and a half out of six. And one of them is actually the number one from Belgium, the same country as Anna's opponents is from. So uh, it's an Indian player, Aryan Chopra and, uh, and Darja, I think his name is. And here we have the first moves coming up. D4, knight f6, c4. These are very normal moves to play if you go for d4 in the opening. So white is grabbing the center and here black has developed a knight, but now with this little move e6. We have seen this before. This is actually one of the most popular move here. I would say it's the, maybe the most popular move to play in this position. While black is going, yeah, we don't know if it will be a solid setup, but it could be a solid setup. But you're keeping lots of options open. And Anna actually had this position already before. And the idea is actually you're closing for this bishop, but you want to move out this bishop very early. And depending on what Anna will play, I guess we will see different moves. Anna can go knight c3. This is one way of de development. Another is knight f3. And normally when you play like this, if knight c3 comes, the idea is actually to go here and to pin the knight. In here we are ready to take the knight because we say we in black things that maybe are taken, you will get a double pawn. And this is actually fight about this square. So in this is what we're learning from the beginning. We're fighting about the center. Anna, she has pushed this pawn in the center. Black has developed a knight. This pawn is, yeah, you're preparing maybe d5, maybe something else. Anna went knight f3. This is one of the two main moves. The main moves are to develop the knight. These are the main moves. And here, this position Anna actually already had in this tournament uh, when she played, I think it was the first round. In here, we have d5 coming. Here we have d5 coming and we have this position where Anna has lots of different moves to do. But I would say, so black now finally is challenging the center with pushing the pawn to d5. Black has a grip of e4, also taking space. So this is what I say is maybe the main way of playing, but black had 
other ways to play too. So now on a developer night, we can see how the moves are coming out very, very quickly. And what will her opponent play here now? So now here, Anna has made, this is absolutely the main move, knight c3 or going g3. g3 would have led the game into Catalan. This would be the most, the main moves in this position. Anna played knight c3, and here we had, oh, we have a6 and this position. This little move, which has become so, so popular. This little move, which has become so popular. And actually, Anna had this position before when she played against, um, Oh, Mohamed Arin, could it be? I think her, name, her opponent's name was like that. He played this, but there were no knight on f3 and no knight on f6. So Anna already had this position one time before, but no knight on f6 and no knight on f3. Will Anna play the same plan going c5 or will she play something else? And this little move, a6, this is the last move I put red here, has become so popular. And the idea is actually that black is planning to take on c4 and then stick to the pawn, try to save it. So this is the plan with this little move. And that's why lots of players, they like in this position to go c tech here, just to open up. But then black says, okay, we get this pawn structure, it's called Carl's bottom pawn structure, and now my bishop can come out. I can go out, okay, I have raised a little tempo with a6, but it could be that in this pawn structure that this is absolutely fine move to be played, that it's not such a uh, waste of tempo. It could be good to have the pawn on a6. So this is actually um, a way for black uh, to play here now. Uh, A6, and it has become so popular. I would say 20 years back, maybe even 10 years back, you didn't see this A6 move. But now we see much more moves with the pawns on H or with the pawns on A. Especially with the pawns on H, we have lots of variation where white can go H4 or even H3, G4. So it's uh, it has become uh, lots of new variation that was not at all popular going back some time and not at all popular in my youth. I would say A6 in my youth, you would think that black played not, uh, um, that it was a dubious move. But now this is a very, very uh, common move to see. And it's just a way of trying to get, uh, I think it's just a way of trying to get a limited little bit white's possibility. And if white do something slowly like here, you can absolutely try to stick to the pawn if you want to, but this will get very, very tactical. This would get very, very tactical, but this is the plan. So let's see. So A6 was coming. We can see her young opponent. He's only 12 years old, but he has a very good rating, 1932, and he's also performing above his rating. And uh, so absolutely no underestimation of her young opponent. He is a young upcoming boy. And um, with young players, you never know where they are. They are going upwards normally. And they, so it can always be very tricky to play with them. You don't know if their rating is, if it's how they're performing or they are, could be performing much about that. So. It's Anna is having a strong, good player. To, uh, she's playing facing today, and he's also a very, very uh, young player from Belgium. But his name is Vietnam. Is a, it's a Vietnamese name, and I think Nguyen is a quite common name actually. What did Anna go? Anna played the same idea and she played C5. She playing the same idea. Here her 
uh, will he go for B6? Will he go for something else? I think absolutely this is uh, what uh, could be expected. Anna played the same, same idea. Yeah, so if he go B6, she will try to play the same way. It's a solid way of playing instead of taking on D5. So Anna is having two and a half points out of six. It's actually called minus one. And what does minus one mean? It means that she has half point less than 50%. But we can say that Anna is scoring according to her rating. But so Anna, the first round, she lost to a Chinese young player who's actually doing very well in the tournament. tournament. He's up on four and a half out of six, and he was very much higher rated than Anna. Second round, Anna won against a Spanish player. And let's see. Have they played more? No, they haven't. Yes, B6 was played. We have this position. Anna took on B6. And now her opponent play C5. This is actually uh, quite interesting what he's playing. He is playing C5. And this is what he had prepared. So could it be now that... Um, and the idea for him is not to take back with the pawn. He wants to challenge the chan center here now. So what would I say is the most popular way of play? And I can't really keep this pawn. You know, if you go queen b3, c4 would, could be coming. And no, this would not be coming b7. You see, I'm not awakened. And why not? Because if you take it, we would grab the rook and we will get a new queen. But after a move like queen b3, uh, maybe we can go bishop d7. And now we are, we go after this pawn. You can't keep it after e3. We will go c4 maybe. And how is a position like this? Queen take b6. Maybe, I don't know. And now we will probably try to challenge this center. And this would become an equal position. Absolutely fine. So I would say now c5 is probably a surprise for Anna, uh, that her opponent playing, but it's absolutely very interesting way of playing. It's more active way of playing for black. And also, oh, sorry, this is not the position. It's here. C5 is played here. And the idea is actually that black wants to take here with a piece. Black is challenging the center. And I think this is a more tempting way of playing this for uh, for black than her opponent did. I don't know if this moves knight f6 and knight f3, if it makes any difference, because her opponent could also have played this c5 when Anna had this had a similar position without the knights two rounds ago. So Anna lost the first round. She won the second round. She lost the third round. She won the fourth round. In the fifth round, she made a draw, but she had such a you, which she had actually a winning position in the last position, but with little time, she went for a perpetual. Yesterday, she was playing... Uh, like in the fifth round against the player with 200 points more and she was doing so well it was then equal but Anna started to make some exchanges and she changed the wrong pieces she went into the end game which was inferior but her opponent made some mistake then it was equal but Anna made mistake and then it was not possible to save the game with a bishop against a very dominating knight. So Anna is having two and a half out of six. Her opponent is also having two and a half out of six. And in a tournament like this, you play lots of players. You play nine rounds. Nine rounds is very to uh, popular to have because you need nine rounds for to make norms. And it's also good to not to have the tournament so short with such a lot of player. So you play against nine different players. You normally have five blacks, five whites, or five whites and five blacks. And you will always keep on playing. Even if you lose in a game, you are not uh, getting out of the tournament. You can all, you are always keep on playing. And um, so, and you normally play against players with the same points as yourself. And yeah, I remember also when I played, I played against Michael Adams when he was 13. I played with him in Lloyds Bank when he was 13. He was like 2,300 then. I was like 2,400 and something. So I was higher rated, but he played so nicely. He was such a strong uh, player already then. So I have also played against some very young players. Um, and uh, who afterwards became very well-known grandmaster. Another one I played with when he was very young was Ponomaryov, Ruslan Ponomaryov. And uh, um, so uh, we should never underestimate these young, young players. And we can see how fully focused her opponent is on the board. 
he's absolutely fully focused. He is sitting there. He, I am sure he has prepared this. He's in the preparation. And of course, also Magnus Carlsson, he was very, very strong already from very, very early years. He was on his way to beat Kasparov very, very early when they played. I think it was, was it a rapid game? I think so. And uh, so... Uh, young kids can be very, very strong, even if they have not been, uh, they haven't been able to play so long time, but they are learning quickly and they have. So they are, could be, you know, becoming stronger very, very quickly. And, but I don't, I, I don't know uh, Anna's opponent. I haven't seen him before. Um, so, but I, I assume he is very, that he is very well known in, in his country. Yeah, it could be that uh, Magnus was 12 when he drew Kasparov, and I think he was absolutely winning in that game, um, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, players who have been very good when they're young, we know lots of them, and there are players who already become grandmasters around 13. Do we have anyone becoming at 12? It could be, I'm not sure how old the youngest, the one who became grandmas at youngest age was now, but it's going down all the time. So uh, strong young players, yeah, we have to watch out for them. They can be very, very dangerous. So here's see if I come, came, <clears throat> and this is absolutely uh, a good move uh, to play. Oh, thank you so much. So it was Abimani Mishra who became grandmaster with 12 years old only. So Anna's opponent is not the grandmaster. I don't think he has a title. It could be has, he hasn't played that long, but he's absolutely a way of, uh, absolutely on his way of becoming a stronger player and very young with 1900. I would say that that is just a very, very good rating for such a night, for such a young player. And I myself, I started playing with chess. So when I was 12, I had only played chess for two years. And so, um, yeah, I'm quite amazed by seeing this. And actually, I myself, I played against a very young girl when I was in Monaco some months ago. She was only eight years from England. And uh, we had a very tough game. It was a blitz game, but I could see that this very, very young girl, even only eight, maybe she was nine, I'm not sure, but I think she was eight, maybe becoming nine this year, she was doing so well. So young kids are really coming. And this is what's so beautiful with chess. I believe chess is such a beautiful game. I played it so long time, but also it's a way of training lots of different uh, things uh, when you are playing chess. So it's uh, if you enjoy it, it's just a fantastic game. My rating is 12. I didn't have any international rating, not at all. At 12, you know, I started with 10 and with 10, I didn't know how to move the pieces. So the first year, I was actually quite slow. Only the first year was just to get the pieces to, you know, to collaborate, to, to put them well together. I, of course, played in the club, uh, lots of games. And then with 11, it started going better with 12, started winning some small tournaments. But my rating, Swedish rating, I guess it was about 1,300. Uh, when I was 12, something like that. So here we see Anna and her opponent, and we can see, i absolutely sure her opponent has pre prepared this, a line, this, um, this line that is, is still in his preparation. And it's actually very, actually, it's actually very, so maybe bishop f4 could be a good move to play. And the idea is actually that if you want to take it, we have this in-between move and the queen needs to move. And maybe, I don't know, even we can go here or we can go, yeah, knight d5, it has to move again. So you will need to go. So maybe bishop f4 is a good move. Then you will need to go queen take b6. And I'm just wondering what is happening here. Can we start kicking it? You will need to come here and we will go bishop d2. So actually, I like bishop f4 in this move. I like bishop f4 very, very much. And it could be that black should not take here because we are going knight a4. I don't know where you're going with the queen somewhere. Maybe you, 
have to come here. Then we can actually take on C5. Uh, what more? Yeah, we can take on C5 if you want to. Just yes, to take it. I don't know which way. Maybe the better way is to take like knight take C5 because we want to get the bishop. It could absolutely be possible to play like this. So I would say bishop f4 looks like a very nice move to play here. It could be that black has to go bishop d6. But then we will take here and we will go, I don't know, maybe we can even go queen b3. But we have taken away the bishop we can even take on c5 we can maybe even go e3 to play this position also or maybe this looks very nice and queen d4 so this is maybe okay i'm not sure no maybe not this is you have things like this i have no idea what is really happening but i think also yes a little more like e3 could be played here and um, if you to, to play this position. I think this should also be fine to play because now we have got out with a black square bishop, but it could be it's about equal. So bishop f4 is the move I like most here. If you go e3, this bishop will stay here behind. It will defend b2, but it will be passive bishop. If you go out here, we are having a big threat of going bishop c7. I think actually it could be you know, have to go bishop d6 or take on b6. But this bishop f4 is the most active move and the reason I like to go here is one is we have a direct flat threat of putting the bishop here defending the pawn and another is we're planning e3 and then taking out the other bishop here but this one becomes an active bishop on f4 here we can see that it is passive So today, Anna and all the players in the tournament, they are playing two rounds. They're playing round seven and eight. And tomorrow morning, the tournament will be finished. So it's just such a heavy, such a, I would say, stressful schedule. See, nine games in six days. But like that, the tournament is not becoming too long. It's easier to go away for vacation for most of the players when it's shorter. But it's a lot of chess in short time. And and that's why we see these early rounds because otherwise the tradition are normally to play in the afternoon. That uh, the normal the official time for FIDE tournaments is that the round starts around three o'clock. In South Europe, especially, I don't especially, but in Spain, where I have been living, it's very common to start the rounds like four, five, six o'clock. I even, I even played a tournament where they were starting eight thirty in the evening, and the idea was that the amateur had a chance to go to work, even have a dinner, and then they could come and play the games. So 10 o'clock is quite early, but it's because they are playing double rounds. I hope Anna is awake and I hope she had a good breakfast. You need to eat, you need to have energy for the games. And we can see that Anna's games has been normally going on for like three, four hours. And uh, so that is quite a long time. <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh, what did Anna play? I cannot see what she did. I think she went e3. Could this be the possibility? I cannot see her move here. Uh, can I cannot see it. I'm sorry. She went e3. She went e3. And now, actually, the idea is if queen takes here now, Anna will go knight e4. This would actually become good for her. She will for her because she will get the bishop here. Maybe you have to come here and we can take here. I have no idea what is happening, but we are absolutely trying to keep this pawn here now. So now it's not possible to take here. I would say her opponent can take on d4 if her opponent wants to. Her opponent could also go and move like knight bd7, and then you are planning to take here. And the idea is actually that you want to take on b6 and you want to put this bishop on b7 to keep control of e4. So I would say, uh, I would expect knight b7 to be played here. I don't know what, what is the main move, uh, because if you take, you can actually take on d4, then the best is to take back with the e pawn. Even if we will have, we have an isolated pawn here, but black, um, and we will have this pawn structure, but the pawn on d4 is important. It challenges this square, and there is not so easy to attack it because black is also having a d pawn. So this is absolutely, I would say, the best way to take back because you keep control of e5, also c5. And like this now, this bishop will absolutely be um, uh, 
can go out later on. So I would say that for me, this is the most normal move to play. Yes, to keep uh, keep the tension here, keep this bishop a little more uh, passive. I have no idea. Maybe we can make a move like this. Maybe this is why it's not so good. Because again, you cannot take here. We will just take back like this. So here, of course, we can take on d4. And now uh, taking with the queen, no, I don't think so that because we have bishop d6 and we will start playing in the center. This would be bad. You need to take it back. And I'm just wondering, move like queen, how will this be? This will absolutely maybe be okay. And now maybe the best is actually to go back. But this is not so easy to see that you are going back here. So let's see, has her opponent played? Uh, no, he is thinking. He is thinking here now. Anna played e3. And he's thinking he will not play. I think knight b7 is the most logical move for me. But it could be that he wants this knight to be on c6. But like, but it does knight c6 here. Could this be a move to play? I don't think so because we have knight a4 and we remember and then we're keeping the pawn. Now for me, knight bd7 is very logical move. It could also be that you want to take here and we take and we grab this pawn with the bishop. But now I guess we are, I don't know, I, I guess we go something bishop b3, bishop is coming out, we go maybe castling, castling, and we have this position where uh, we have it. It's not the symmetric pawn structure. White is having one, two, three pawn islands, and black is only having two, and I open a b5, and black wants to say that I am getting counterplay against b2. I think white will have to go b3 some moment, so you will be able to develop the bishop. But this is not the game. Let's go back to the game. Her opponent is has not played. This is the last move. I will put a little bit in red so you can see it. <clears throat> Her opponent is uh, Koi Nugin. I hope I can pronounce it more or less fine. He's from Belgium, but his name is uh, Vietnam, from Vietnam, I believe. And he's only 12 years old. So he's born 2012. Uh, it could be that he's actually 11. I'm not sure when he has his birthday, but he is very, very young, 11, 12 years old, born 2012. So, and, but he has been scoring uh, very well above his rating. He has a performance with 2080 something. So uh, not to underestimate uh, her opponent at, at all. Now is he on his way to move? Maybe we can see both of them are very, very focused. And I really love to see this wooden board uh, they are playing with, which is, has become standard uh, when you have a, a, a digital board and you can follow the games online. And uh, yeah, so they are both fully focused. And even if this, this is a tournament with classical game, they have only 90 minutes for the whole game plus 30 seconds. And now it looks like lots of time, but when you get down to 10 minutes, it's just very little time and then there can be mistakes. So this is classical game, but shorter classical game than Anna played in Rilton Cup and when she played in Reykjavik Open. And this is the third over the board tournament Anna is playing this year. And it's the first time she play on Menorca. Menorca Open has become very, very big, very, very strong. Lots of grandmasters, international masters. There are also women grandmasters and women international masters, feeder masters and candidate masters. So there are lots of uh, plays with titles and also amateurs. And the number one, um, Eriashi, oh, Argun, oh, so difficult. Ergasi Arun, perhaps his name is from India. He's the number one. He has 27.56. That's amazing to see such a strong player in an open tournament. Let's go back some years, and you couldn't see so strong players playing going playing in open tournaments. Maybe not just some few years, but like 15, 20 years, it was very, very unusual. But that's so nice to see. And there are also plays without ill rating, without international rating. So it's a wide, wide, um, very wide between the lowest rated and the strongest players. And then there are, I think there are close to 20 players with between 
2,600 and 2,700. And then her opponent, they had two and a half out of six. Those who are leading, there are two plays with five and a half out of six. And then there are, uh, I think there are seven plays with five out of six in the top. <clears throat> he is thinking, uh, taking a bit of time. What is he going to do? I expect knight b d7. This is what I expect. He can also... Queen takes b6 is not such a good move because Anna will go knight a4. If you go queen c7, uh, can we just play? Uh, and maybe can we go for the bishop pair here? Maybe bishop d2. But I actually also just go for the bishop pair and we will play with them. I don't know. Maybe we go bishop d2 and we have a very, very big threat of rook c1. I just want you to see if we go somewhere here to take the bishop. We have this rook c1, and you can see with the queen moving, we would grab it. But of course, in a position like this, black would just go castling, and we would play here, probably rook c1 and bishop c3. But her opponent will absolutely not take on b6. He will not take the pawn. And this is what he will, he can take on d4, and then he will take, because if he takes, Anna needs to take with the pawn. If she does something else, she will give the center. She needs to take with the pawn, so she has this pawn controlling e5, um, supporting the knight if the knight wants to go to e5. Also, it will open up for the bishop to play. So this is very important to know when we want to take back with a piece or when we want to take back with... Um, uh, so this was the last move with, uh, with a pawn. And here it's... We can see black is challenging d4. Anna now defended d4 with a pawn. Black has control of e4. This knight is also standing very well, controlling d5 and e4, and this stands, knight stands also very well. So these three knights are standing on their best places there in the center. And that's why we, lots of time, when we de develop the pieces, we start going with the pawns. Preferably you put your pawns two steps forward, e4, d4, c4, whatever you want, but I think it's a good way of starting the game taking space but then when we move out um, the bishop and knights we start with the knights because the knight normally have one very very good square sometimes it can go somewhere else but normally this is the most natural square to be here in the center so we start lots of time with the knights but the bishop which is a long range piece can be put maybe here here maybe even could go to b4 if you take after on d4 so we that's why we start with the knights first because the bishop had more alternatives to, to choose from. Anna lost yesterday. Unfortunately, she played a very good game. She played very nicely in the middle game against a player with 200 points more. He was from China, a young player. He was two years younger than Anna. Not as young as her opponent today, but he was also young. But Anna played very nicely in the middle game. But when getting to the end game, Anna, with little time, she started to go. Uh, she just exchange pieces in the wrong way and she got into a lane game which was where the knight was stronger than the bishop she still had very good chances for draw but she went wrong and when she went wrong this dominating knight just decided the game so anna lost yesterday and she's having two and a half point out of six she won she lost the first round won the second lost the third round uh, won the fourth she made a draw in the fifth round and she lost the sixth round Uh, uh huh. So, um, yeah, I haven't checked um, uh, her opponents. Uh, so it seems like this is the third time her opponents play against play with higher rating, and in all these games, he has been playing with the black pieces. I think Anna went to get some coffee, some tea, or something. What did she have there? I just hope she will have something to get a lot of energy because playing in the morning is not so easy and here it came the move i think was the most expected the night to be d7 and the idea is actually that now you can plan to take with the queen let's see anna go bishop d3 because if you take with the queen here now this knight is good because it supports the pawn here now knight d4 you just move it somewhere and when you take, we will absolutely take back. And this would make the position very easy for white, for black. This extra pawn in center will, in the middle game, be better than white's extra pawn on the 
queen side. So this, so this is not what we want to play. So bishop knight b7. This was the last move. I think this was absolutely very expected. Now the plan is not to take with the knight because the knight is better on d7. It's it means also if Anna takes on c5, um, it can take back with the knight. But move. I think all the time you take with bishop. But on d7 it stands well. It controls e5 and now it's it's also defense c5 so anna never has this maneuver knight a4 and then taking a c5 and black needs to take back with the bishop what well, black can always take back with the knight so knight d7 was what i think was the most natural move in this position and what can oh sorry anna is thinking here let's see this is here now and what can Anna play? Anna can actually go knight a4 if she wants to, but I don't know. And the, uh, this is actually the idea with knight a4 is more that you are forcing her opponent to make something here um, because you cannot take on b6. We would take on c5 and you could go c4. But after c4, I think we just go, we can go maybe, ah, we can even go bishop d2. And we have this very, very beautiful idea, which would be almost winning. We are pinning the knight. So c4 is not a good uh, move. So knight a4 is absolutely a plan. And the idea is that if you take here, we will grab on c5. We will be very, very happy. So you will need to take here. We will take back with the pawn. Now you can take here. And now we can maybe go knight c5. I'm just, we're not really scared of playing a position like this because we are having the bishops here. Also, maybe we start pushing you back here i'm not sure what is the better but normally you don't want to play like this with black so knight c5 could be actually be a, a possibility to play here now and if you come back here i guess maybe we will just we can maybe we can maybe play bishop b3 but maybe we can just uh i don't know if we can go even knight d3 to play uh, put the knight on e5 five here i'm not sure but knight d3 looks a little bit funny but it could absolutely be played like that. So let's see um, what Anna will do. Knight a4 is maybe the move I like most here. Uh, now, otherwise, can she go here? But we have then queen take b6 and to go something like, I don't know, it's not really a threat to take here. Maybe he has to start to develop the pieces. Sometimes you might have to go b3, but this is a little bit, you get a little bit weakened here on the black squares. So you not really want to make it too quickly. So I say knight d4 is the move I like most here for Anna. Sorry, this is the last move play, knight bd7. Uh, yeah, I played, uh, I play officially, we, uh, we have played very few games, Anna and I, over the board. Um, we have played one classical game, I think it was a draw, we have played some rapid games maybe but not many times in tournaments at home of course we have played and we have made all different results so of course anna has beat me when we have played at home and then we have been playing blitz so uh yeah a at home we have had all results between anna and me absolutely so and we are anna's uh, we are actually a chess family Everything started with, uh, in, for me, with my father who played chess with my brother, and I followed him. So uh, Anna's uncle, Dan Kramling, he's an international master. Anna's father, Juan Bayon, he's a grandmaster. And, um, and I, I'm also a grandmaster. So we, Anna is uh, in a chess family, and it's so nice that she also wants to play chess because when you're in chess family, it becomes a lot, a lot of chess all the time. And it can be good, but it can also be sometimes too much. And I have played lots of time with uh, Anna's father, Juan Bayon, in tournaments, but uh, normally our games will be a draw. Normally we, we are not in such a fighting spirit against each other. So um, yeah, we, that's, that's quite uh, normal. Also Anna, I guess, has played some games with her father in some uh, tournaments. I think at least once they play in Gibraltar. And I think uh, actually, yeah. 
So now Anna is thinking her opponent goes up. What will she play? But I like knight a4. And the reason I like knight a4 is that it will force her opponent to take here. And knight b6, actually, I like knight c5. This is a beautiful way of playing. You can come back here. And now the question is, shall we keep it? I'm not sure I like a move like bishop e3. Can we? But now this is a threat to taking. To go b4, no, I don't think so. You can maybe start challenging in this point. This is too early. Either you you need to move it or you need to defend it. Sorry, maybe this could be a possibility, but I'm not really sure if I would like to play like this. So uh, this could absolutely knight a4, knight b6, knight c5, but you can also come back here with knight c3. And I would say that this is about an equal position. Bishop b7, you are developing here. Bishop comes to d6, we will go something like this, maybe to put the rook on e1. Maybe queen e2 is actually logical, not the rook. You're defending e4, and you are bringing this up here, and you're also looking a little bit at a6. I would say that this is about an equal position here. So let's see, knight bd7 was played. This is the position, this is the last move. Anna is thinking her opponent is... Uh, uh, he, her opponent has spent less time, but I guess I believe that this is what he was uh, yeah, preparing for this game. And it's just a very, very interesting position we have on the board. Where uh, Anna has a pawn up, but this pawn will not remain long. You cannot try to save it. It will not remain long at all. So uh, Anna, her opponent will get the pawn back and then her opponent is just playing against the center. Um, and um, so has quite, has some, one extra pawn here in the center. And in the middle game, this is normally quite good to have. And white is having extra pawn on the queen side, which in the end game could be an advantage. It depends on what kind of end game, of course, peace activity and everything. But we can see that it's not a symmetrical pawn structure. And when you play in chess, always look at the pawn structure and always be careful with your pawn moves because the pawn cannot go back, backwards, of course not. And when you move, push a pawn forward, uh, just uh, uh, that look that it not will become a weakness. If you push it too much, it could be weak. So we have to be careful with our pawns and the pawn structure is very important when we decide the plans we want to to go for. What will Anna play here now? She go knight a4. I think this is absolutely a nice mode to be played here now. Absolutely knight a4. And the plan is knight b6. Now actually, uh, if, if, her uh, if her opponent plays something like this, I would say this is a mistake because we have bishop d2. Now bishop a4, is this possible to play? I don't know. Can we play bishop a4 here now? And castling, there's no b7 coming because you can have this with check. But I guess we would just go, oh, maybe there's something like b4. Oh, and the idea, if you take, we will have b7 here. Oh, this is getting, yes, very crazy. But this is just getting good here now. So, but uh, let's see. So now after knight a4, I would say knight e4 is a good move. You're stopping bishop to d4. And, but after knight e4, I say we could go yes, bishop d3. So I'm not sure this is such a good move. The main move is to take on d4. Anna needs to take back with the pawn. Anything else like this wouldn't be... I don't like this because you go bishop d6 and you will have this pawn moving. We will not be able to stop the pawn from going to e5. Maybe you can play this. We go e5, but where are we going to play here? Maybe I have no idea if this is fine. Can we take here now? And yes, no, we cannot. We have a check here, you see. So it could be possible to play like this, but bishop b7 is coming and... Yeah, maybe we can try to keep the pawn. Maybe this is possible to play. We try to stick to the pawn and black is having the center, but I'm not sure if these pieces on the rim are so good. It's, it's a possibility to play like this, but I would myself take back with the pawn. I would do that. So let's see, knight a4 was played. I think this was a very nice move of Anna. I think uh, also her opponent played this nicely with knight d7. And we have a... Um, and quite uh, unusual position on the board. And now Anna is moving the same knight twice. 
Uh, normally, we should try to go up with the bishop and go castling, develop on the king's side, put our king into safety. But Anna, she wants to play, uh, uh, she wants to use the fact that her opponent has not taken on b6. So she is defending b6, but she is also putting pressure on the pawn on c5 and here. And we remember that if Anna can change this knight for that bishop, she will be happy, even if black gets an extra pawn in the center, because she will get the bishop pair, and the bishop pair is an, an static advantage you can have for a long time. So uh, knight a4 was a nice move, and it was absolutely fine, even if you move the knight twice here. I think he, her opponent is on his way to move here. I think he's on his way to move, and that it looks like that. What would I expect? I would expect him to take on d4. I think so. I would expect him to take on d4. What else can I go? He can go c4, but c4 is a mistake. Bishop d2. Now you need to go maybe a5 to stop him from coming. We go b3 here, and if you take here, we can just take back with the queen, and now we are getting uh, our pawn. We will stay with our pawn for a long time here now. So this is not possible. Going C4 is not so good. You will go B3. And uh, so the idea with C4 is not good for black to play. Uh, it's better for black to exchange one pawn in the center, taking on D4. This uh, would be better. And today they are going to play, they are playing the seventh round now, which started just 45 minutes ago. And they will also play round number eight in the evening, which will start five o'clock CET time. So it's another um, day, it's the third day with double rounds. So they are playing three days with double rounds and three days with only one game, which is quite a lot <laughs> anyway, I believe. But no, it's normal, one, one game per day, of course. But, um, uh, but it's becoming much more popular to play double rounds, to make the tournament shorter, to make it easier for players to have time to participate. And that is absolutely uh, understandable, absolutely. So, uh, and there are also tournaments where you have double rounds all the time. You're playing five, you're playing nine rounds in five days with four double rounds, which is, of course, even more tougher than playing with three double rounds. So Anna is playing, they are, oh, Anna and all the players are playing round seven now, and play round eight later. And last round, round number nine will be played tomorrow. And I believe they start 10 o'clock tomorrow morning also. Yeah, no, and also, of course, if the tournaments are shorter, it's not only the time, it also makes it cheaper uh, to go away. So it makes it easier in, in, in the, for different reasons to have shorter tournaments. In Sweden, actually, we have a Grand Prix series with weekend tournaments. So they only play Friday evening, Saturday and Sunday. And this is the same reason. It's easier for the players to come. Uh, they are free on the weekends. And it also will not be so expensive to be away during just maybe two nights. So knight a4 came and her opponent's thing. I hope he will think a little bit more, but we can see he's still by... Uh, uh, of the c4, I like bishop d2. And the reason is I want to keep this pawn because if you take it, I have this pawn pin and this would actually winning uh, maybe not winning material but we will put pressure i think we can go queen e5 here now you have to do something like this and we don't win material but it getting very awkward with lots of active pieces and we haven't developed it so you don't win material but you put pressure on black so black will not take on black will absolutely not go c4 another reason why c4 we had this if we go a5 stopping the bishop coming here now we break up uh, the, the 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 pawns so now anna uh, instead of changing a center pawn, Anna keeps her beautiful center. Anna is opening up. If you take here on b6, I guess we just, I don't know if we take on b6 or if we take on c, no, of course we take on c, b6 first, I'm sorry. If we take on c for black, or of course take for the bishop, knight. So we need to take here and we take, and we can grab this extra pawn. You can see this is an extra pawn. So this is why, uh, and if you, if after b3 you take it, we take with the queen. 
And now this pawn has become a huge pawn. Some moves early in this position is not a huge pawn. It's a pawn that can uh, that black can take, but uh, when black take it has to be careful so black doesn't lose c5 pawn that's why i think it's most logical to take here anna can take back with the queen i would take back with the pawn but she can take back with the three queen tried to stick to this extra pawn but i don't know how this position would be you try to stick because after e5 queen c3 you don't have a move like this because we would yes oh we have a check here <laughs> winning everything so but it could be possible it would be so so uh, I don't know what will happen here. It would be a little bit crazy. So I expect her opponent take on d4. If he takes there, Anna can go for two moves. Take him back with the queen. Try to stick to the pawn or take him back with the pawn. Yes, try to keep more control in the center. This is what I'm expecting. What more could be? I don't expect this. I would say c for his mistake. Could rook b8 b move to be played? I don't think so because we have bishop d7 and bishop a5, bishop d2. And this bishop a5 coming just trying to stick to the pawn and again we have this way of playing and here i don't know what could be happening can we take here with the bishop i have no we cannot oh there is so many maybe we go with yes, rook c1 you're coming back but we see there's so so much pressure here against uh her opponent so no her opponent cannot what did he play uh, uh what did he play he played bishop d6. He just played the bishop to d6. Um, this was a little bit surprising move to me. Uh, I would go now bishop d2. I would absolutely go bishop d2 in this position. And um, so I think bishop d6 was played. Let's put it on the live board directly. Was it bishop d6? He wants to go for development. That surprised me. And I can go queen b3, but I like bishop d2. Now I'm planning bishop a5 after castling. Can we go bishop f5? What will this position be? Can you take here? Can we take back with the pawn? Are we scared that you're opening up the center? I don't think so. Can we take here or is this better not? Yeah, we can even play a position like this and we are having no this is actually losing and i cannot because we have some tactics here but we could play yeah this is so maybe after a move like e5 yes to keep it like this but we're keeping our spawn so he played bishop d6 this was a move that surprised me it was absolute move that surprised me but it's in one way logical he's developing he's saying i will take this pawn later if anna goes bishop d2 i think we will see a5 but is this good or not i don't know if a5 is good you're giving this square we can go something like queen b3 can you go rook b8? No, because we take on a5. You cannot play a move like this. And if you go c4, we will go. Now we actually have b7. So you will need to go bishop b7 here to stop the pawn. And we have a position like this. And now knight take would actually get you into problem here. Because we have a check here, you have to defend. And we're getting lots of activity. So bishop d2, I really hope Anna will go for this move. Bishop d6 was played. But I would really like to go bishop d2. I think we will see castling. And then maybe, yes, you don't have to go bishop a5. Maybe rook c1 is a good move to play. c4, we have b3. Trying to open up the position and we have a mobile bishop a5 now you can defend it like this so it could be ah it could be if anna go bishop d2 our opponent wants to take here but we cannot do we have d tech c5 this will not be good so what is the plan could this be the plan to go and to take here now because you want after bishop a5 can we go bishop c7 but no we have rook c1 and there are lots of danger here for black so i like very much in this position uh, this was the last move played i like this was the last move played and i was thinking but i like to go bishop d2 just uh trying to keep this pawn and to see what are you going to do about and i think your opponent will go castling here maybe rook c1 can we do something like this can we take here and go but here i think we would take with the knight here or maybe with the knight maybe with the pawn with knight we have some ideas of getting activities here and e5 what is the position like this i'm not really sure how is the position like this maybe we can play this and bishop d3 or bishop d3 probably but uh, yes a little bit be careful here how is the position like this 
and yeah this is very very far away the bee farm i think it's difficult to keep the bee pump but black what black wants to do is probably to go for e5 instead no this is not the position it's like here bishop d6 was the last move play but i would go bishop d2 here absolutely i would absolutely go for bishop d2 in a position like this <clears throat> And here it came, Anak played bishop d2. I think this is a very logical move to play uh, because now it's not so easy to take back the pawn. Um, it's not so easy to take back the pawn on uh, uh, to, to on b to take back the pawn here on b6. So bishop d2 is logical. What it is that her opponent can be going? I think her opponent will go castling here now. And if he goes castling, it could be that Anna will go bishop a5, but it's not the strongest move because her opponent can take and take and maybe try to go something queen e7 and get some activities here. Oh, because the idea is to go maybe bishop b4 check, a3, and you have e5. This is getting, so bishop a5 is not the best. So bishop d2 was played. I would absolutely also play bishop d2. But if her opponent goes castling, which I think he will do here, I would prefer, I don't know, to develop the bishop, or uh, I think this is normal. Maybe to go rook c1 is good, um, but maybe also to go bishop e2 could be good. But then her opponent maybe go a5, and we have this position. And I don't want to put the bishop here on d4. It could be that you can go c4, and you do it with tempo. It, this is important, not to allow your, um, not allow your, uh, opponent to go c4 with tempo. Without tempo, c4 is not a good move, not yet. Bishop d2, it also avoids some checks. If knight, sorry, this is the last move. This is, the, here we have it. Here we have it, last move, bishop d2 was played. And it is actually the idea that if you, to have bishop a5, if black goes for take the pawn, uh, in different moments, you can have bishop a5 and you will pin the knight. You will absolutely pin the knight. And, but what is good? So black has developed the piece. It was a logical move. And you are saying, I don't care about this pawn. I'm going for activity. Uh, I think her opponent will go castling. And now this is very tempting, but this is not the best move. Probably it could be rook c1 is the best, starting to threaten to take in here. And if you take here, the question is, shall you take with the knight or with the pawn? Probably positionally this is better. And here we can have this e5 move coming. And I'm just wondering what is happening here. Can we go bishop e2? You have some checks here and you have rook e8. Bishop is coming, coded, and now we have bishop g4. So in a position like this, we need to go bishop e3. We need to control this square after bishop f4. I think actually we should just give it the pawn. Absolutely. So this is absolutely a dream to play for with white. You have an extra pawn on b6. You don't care about this e3 pawn. You control the back square and the, the black squares. And you see an isolated pawn? control the square in front of it, this, and it's also in the same color as the bishop. This is a dream. So this is what my brother always liked to say. I, I, I remember it, that when you have a pawn extra, it's very good to have a pawn extra because you can give it back in the right moment to get something else. You give it back, maybe to, that your pawn will become uh, stronger. You get more activity or you win something else. Oh, sorry. This was the last move. Bishop d2 was played here. And you, we can see her opponent is thinking, he's a very young player, he's born 2012, but we should not at all uh, underestimate him. He has been doing very well, performing above his rating. He has playing well uh, against strong players. I think he has made some draws against IAMs, or at least one IAM. So we have a young player, an uh, upcoming young player, and it's just very important to be focused, to try to play your best, and not at all to underestimate your opponent just yes, because he's so very young. And he's from Belgium and he is, um, but I guess the name is, uh, is a Vietnamitic name because uh, New Guinea, I've seen some players having, it looks like he's going to play and I think he will go castling. I think he will go castling. And this is actually 
getting then a little bit scary if it goes castling, but it's the absolutely normal move. Castling or A5, these are the moves I could see. Castling or A5, but A5 is a slow move, taking away bishop A5, but now queen B3 will come with force, and you don't have rook bait ever because you will threaten this. So A5, he will not be playing. I'm not sure. That would be a mistake. A5 is just to stop bishop from coming to A5, but it would be a mistake to play that. So now Anna's threat, uh, yes. And if you go castling, I'm around under, but coming here, you have bishop b7. You can maybe go rook b8 here also, bishop a5. But now uh, we are coming behind. Maybe we go something like queen e7. And yeah, I don't know. It's, this is about equal. We will not stay with this pawn so much longer because black is trying to open up the center and white is behind with development. Absolutely. So uh, for me, the most, uh, uh, the more I think is best is just to go castling. And the idea of this castling is that you have not developed, oh, sorry, uh, you have not developed, is to open up here with CE5 in the right moment, is to take on D4 and open up with E5. But such an exciting position already now. And uh, yeah, what? So I say castling is this. I was thinking, oh, if I, this is a mistake. If I would not be good either, because we can actually, you see, there is a pawn falling on c5. This is absolutely not. Uh, not good to play in any way. So no, not e5, of course not. If you want to go e5, you want to castle first and you need to take on d4 first. I think he will go castling here. Um, I think so. I think also this is the best move in the position. Just develop your pieces. He said, he put, uh, when he go bishop d6, he said, I'm not scared about your extra b pawn. I'm going to play in the center. I'm putting my king into safety and then I'm going to break up in the center and I see your king is still on e1. You need to make two moves to get your piece out. So I guess maybe castling. If Anna go bishop e2, can we see a5? Can we go queen b3 here now? But then we have bishop b7. And this is actually maybe getting fine for black who is planning c4. So this is very, uh, yeah, the difference is uh, that uh, a5 is good after castling, but it's not good before castling. And that is not so easy to see why this is not so good to go here. And the reason is because in a position like this, we have this check. This is the reason why A5 is only good to play when you have castle, not earlier. Bishop d2 was the last move play. If your opponent go castling, I'm sure Anna will go e5. And then I think we will see this. What will Anna take back with? She can take back with different pieces. I, I don't know which one is the better. Absolutely not. If you take with the pawn, we will just try to go queen e7 to have this check. And after here, we will go e5. Yes, to try to... Uh, to open up the position. I have no idea what will happen in here. Where is the knight going? This is getting a little bit, this could be scary. We could have e3. e3 is just yes, such a strong move. You can't allow this, no. So this is absolutely a little bit. What did he do? He played castling. He played absolutely the best move. He played castle. This was absolutely the best move to play castle. We see the kings came here and now his plan is to go a5. Now his plan is to go a5. So he played very nicely here. Now probably could it be that Anna should go rook c1 to put pressure on the c pawn. You have to take here and now the bishop is better on d2. You cannot take on b6. If you go something like a5 here now, we have queen b3. Queen b3 is good when there are no c pawns. So rook c1 is a very, very good mode to play here now because if you take, we take back and if you go c4, we go b3 and we are breaking up the pawns here. So rook c1 is a very, very good mode to play. Will Anna find this tremendous good move? Here I'm wondering, can knight e4 be played here now? But now we have bishop here. I'm just wondering what will happen. We have a queen e7. I guess we need to go a3. We have e5. But now this knight is in the way. You can't go e4. So rook c1 is a very, very good move to play here. But it's 
Will Anna find this move? Will she find this move? Her opponent played castling. This is the last one. Now her opponent has finished developing here on the king side. The only piece which has not gone out on b7. Anna is still having an extra pawn, but will she will remain with it? She also, um, so this is the best good thing. Anna is very good here on the queen side. She is behind on the king side. Will she make a little slow developing move or will she put more pressure? Rook c1 is putting pressure. You're planning to take on c5. You're really planning to take on c5. So this is a very good move rook c1 and actually this would be very natural move but here now this playing in the center is not so strong any longer because after e5 bishop e2 e4 is not possible and in a position like this we could go castle and we could also take it back but this would absolutely be very very nice for white to play so let's see but I would say in this position, bishop a5 is very tempting, but rook c1 is just very good. If you take here, are you scared of a5 coming here now? But then we have queen b3 and you can't. And if you go rook bait, we will just grab the pawn here. And I think this will absolutely getting fine. So let's see. Uh, rook c1 is the strongest move, but bishop a5 is very tempting. But bishop a5, I would say that this would make the game very, very tactical. I have no idea how Anna takes back, but it could be that it's better to take back with a piece, not to try to play positionally here. Just take with a piece, just to try to keep this e5 uh, close. So maybe something like this, bishop b7 is coming. And now maybe a move like bishop is because after e5 you always have knight f5 and it would come here so i i would guess here anna will go castling was the last one this is very tempting rook c1 is the strongest move uh, but bishop e2 is also logical then her opponent will go a5 and we will have a position which is about equal i would say here so um sorry this was played this was the last move played Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't know. So this is a very common name in Vietnam, New Guinea, and I think actually also Sweden, we have a young player uh, with this uh, name. So it's just very, very common, like Johansson, Karlsson, Svensson, and Eriksson in Sweden. Um, so yeah, every country we have our most popular names. And actually when I played Olympiad 96, I believe this was the first time Vietnam took a uh, part in the Olympiad and they had a very very young team if I remember correctly when they played the first time I think it was 96 not even not even 30 years back and they had I think they only had very young players playing so that was actually very very nice to see you can see how chess is um, becoming such a global uh, game, it's such a global, global sport played all over the world. And there's so many nations now uh, taking part in tournaments, being a part of the World Chess Federation. And we can see it in the, the tournament. I love very, very much the Olympiad, which is a team tournament where you are playing four plus one in each team. You have an open class and a woman class, and there are about 160, 170, maybe 180 teams playing in each a category there are a little less in the woman category category but uh, you play all these nations you have the best players in the world and also amateur teams so um be castling was played that was very very natural black has developed so we can say black is better here but anna is better on the queen side so these moves I'm thinking on bishop a5, I think this is what Anna will play. Rook c1 is a very, very good move to play also. Absolutely. Rook c1 is the best move. And it's actually because you're putting pressure here. And if she goes here, I think knight e4 will be played. But now bishop a5 is so much more stronger with knight on e4. This knight is actually better on f6 than on e4, but it's not easy to, to see. So what will she do? Bishop a5, rook c1, or bishop e2, these are my guesses. I don't think Anna will do something else. It's good to keep the tension here. Again, we see these are tension. They are looking at each other. And with rook c1, you are putting more pressure on your opponent. Your opponent has to do something about this tension. So what is she going to do? What will she do here? I hope for rook c1, 
Bishop a5 is very tempting to play. I don't think Anna will go bishop e2 uh, this slow mo because she knows now that her opponent is going to play a5. His plan now is a5 and then take back the pawn. a5 without taking on d4. And this why is rook c8 is a good move because now you have to decide what to do. And when you take here now, I told you before a5, now we have queen b3. Without the c, b, c pawns, this queen is very strong here and it's difficult to get this pawn back. This is absolutely very fine I don't know and this is absolutely very fine so but I think Anna is uh, thinking of rook c1 or bishop a5 one of these two moves is what I'm expect Anna to play one of these two moves and she played rook c1 oh she played this beautiful rook c1 so nice to see I'm so happy she find the best move in the position she's putting pressure on c5 what are you going to do here now what are you going to play and I just want to say this is out of question we no not like this I'm so sorry we will go bishop a5 and then we take on c5 I am so sorry I was making something wrong but knight take b6 of course not because c5 is hanging you you are also getting into the pin. Rook c1, she played it very, very beautiful. I'm so happy to see this very, very nice move Anna played here. And now I expect her opponent to take here on d4, or I expect her opponent either to take on d4 or go knight e4. But after knight e4, you are defending c5. Now bishop a5 is coming with the strength. You can go bishop e here. You are planning. I wonder, can we take like this? You take on d4. What? But now we have queen take d4. If you go e5, we will actually grab this pawn. Yes, you have a check here now, but we will just put something here between. I have no idea what is happening, but it's just getting so crazy. If you go knight f6, we could absolutely just take on b4 also and take, I don't know where we can take. We can go. We have a rook hanging. You see lots of pieces hanging. No control here. But I just wanted to show that um, in this position here, so rook c1 was played this is the last move this was played uh, I yes this was played uh and this is just a very good move. She is putting pressure. And again, we can see this. You have tension. Tension is that you have pieces looking at each other. You can exchange the pieces. And this is normally a very easy mistake to do when you start with chess, that when you see a piece you can exchange, you just grab it. But lots of time it's better to let your opponent make the exchange. Maybe like that you can get a piece to more active square, you can win something. And this is what's happening here. Now, Anna put the rook on c1. She is actually asking her opponent what he's going to do with the c5 pawn. He has to do something with this. He can defend it like this. He could also go queen e7 if he wants to. This he could do. But then actually, this is maybe what he will do. Then actually I would say bishop e2 is the best move to play here. Bishop e2 and now this pawn is standing here. Knight e4 and now Anna can just go castling. This is absolutely fine. She can also go bishop a4. We have been looking at this before and after taking, taking you have to take not with the king with the queen just you're stopping this and bishop b7 and we just in time for castling you are getting the center but we stick to our extra pawn here this is absolutely fine to play let's go back let's go back so rook c1 was played i would say one move two moves or three moves or four moves these are the four moves her opponent has to choose from i cannot see anything else Queen either defending c5 pawn because now Anna is attacking it with a knight, with a pawn too, and with a rook here is three pieces. Black only defends with a knight and with a with the bishop. So this was the last move. We put it like this. So this was the last move. So queen e7 or knight e4. These are the two moves to defend it. Otherwise, you have to take away the tension with either taking here or c4. But c4 would absolutely be answered by b3 breaking up here. And this would be a dream for Anna. All of a sudden, this pawn is a huge pawn. And I can see that black ever will get its back. So here we have it. Her opponent, well, I would say, I said taking on d4. Um, it, it could be here. 
and uh, but now what are you going to do? And now to go e5, I'm just wondering. We can just take care. Can we just go something like bishop e2? After a move like d4, we will actually just grab it. It's not possible. And if you give check here now, and you go rook e8 here now, we need maybe to go bishop e3. And after a move like bishop f4 here now, what is hanging? Be not scared of d4 because the rook is hanging over there. The rook is absolutely hanging. We can even go castling first here. So this would absolutely be yes winning the game um let's go back so uh there could be some tactics here in this position but i would say that the main move after rook c1 is knight e4 queen e7 or taking on d4 these are the three main moves for her opponent to choose from c4 would be a mistake because anna play b3 breaking up here and if her opponent go a5 anna would win this pawn actually she can go rook b1 defending here first or she can take on c4 but she would be playing with an extra with an extra pawn so b3 will not be in the game so uh uh, they're both fully focused. We can see that Anna's opponent has not gone up one single time. He's so fully fo focused, even if he's a very young player. He's born 2012, but he's doing very well. And no underestimation for young players. I have been facing them too. Uh, uh, and it's just, and he played queen e7. And now I like bishop e2. I like bishop e2. So he makes this strong thing. He has keeping attention. He wants to go for e5. And I would just say that now bishop e2 is a very good move to play because we see that this queen is now he is going up. The queen is looking at e1. So I like uh, this bishop e2 because he has to develop it. I know he will not take back the pawn now. So I like bishop e2, knight e4, and here Anna can actually go both. She can just go castling. If it takes here, you will just take back. If it goes something less c4, we will always bring this back bishop here. We will move the queen somewhere and we not either you take it and we will have this fantastic position and we are going after yeah you can go rook b8 try to get it back but we are pinning we get in some activities here i just showing we can have the activities here also so it's not easy to get it back but he went my queen is seven i hope now anna will just go for developing um the piece that don't take on c5 you can do that but no let just stay here this not uh uh, not open up for the pieces to come out so not be should be free because you give c4 with tempo you could play this but i think that would be unnecessary no i like bishop e2 it's also very logical that the queen stands here we want and then it could be could you go for e5 here now no this would absolutely be a mistake we would take here take on here and we can actually take on c5 if you want to we can even go bishop c3 and this would absolutely we can even take on f6 and take on d5 here or bishop f3 but there will be pawns falling now this is not good so i would say bishop b2 is actually the best move it's also very logical move because the queen is standing here now this pawn is not threatened to be taken and so after bishop b2 could it be that he wants to go a5 but we will absolutely we can even go b3 to stop c4 i'm wondering castling can you go c4 we will go b3 here again so i would say if you go a5 um so bishop b2 is just very good you're not scared of the pawn coming to a5 you need just to develop your pieces here And because her opponent's plan is to take on d4 and go e5. Um, so, we, and Anna, I told you, she is very good on the queen side, but she is behind on the king side. So she needs to get her bishop out. It's very normal to put it here and then go castling. This is very logical. I don't know if you go bishop d3. And if you take here, yeah, she needs to take back with a knight. This would be good. This would be less good because you have e5 coming and you will open up the position. You will need maybe to go back and no, no, we don't want to do like this. So uh, bishop d3, I don't like, I, but it's so much, but it's possible. I would pray bishop b2, yes, to get up with the bishop, to put the king into safety. 
she doesn't have to do anything more on the queen side now she needs to develop her king side so she will be has her king on a safe position um, and the king will be safe on the king side after castling Yes, so Anna is playing on Menarca. It's the third open held on Menarca, and it's the first time Anna is taking part in the tournament. It's a huge open, lots of strong players, lots of players. I think there are about 50, close to 50 nations playing there, and uh, there are most players from Spain, of course, uh, that's natural, but there are also a big group of Indian players, and Anna has played against one of those. There are about 30 Indian players, and then there are like 18 players, was it maybe from Germany, uh, and then lots of players from other countries. Anna actually has played against players from China too, so she has been playing from players, uh, uh, against players from lots of different countries, and now she's facing a very young boy from Belgium. He is very, very young, but he's playing very natural, very well. He has just, he doesn't care to take him back a pawn, and he is just playing for now, uh, opening up in the center and saying, you can stay with the pawn, I am going to play in the center. This pawn doesn't matter now if I will mate you. It, of course, in the end game, it, it will be a very good pawn if you can stay with it all the way until then. But there are lots of things happening before that. So he played this very nice way. Queen is seven. His idea is to go e5, to take on d5, and then plan to go e5. Um, I wouldn't say now that there, uh, because chess has become so global, you can train online, you can train, uh, we can see there are lots of strong players who are having trainers from other countries. So I wouldn't say that you have a special style, not any longer, but maybe before. I, I would say that I thought the Chinese players, when they were becoming strong, because it's also quite a young nation in Western chess, they had their own Chinese chess, which is much more popular than uh, chess that we are playing, and it's also played in a more aggressive way. So when the Chinese players were coming, they were more tactical, I would say. Uh, but in general, um, sometimes you can see that uh, some openings are maybe a little more popular in some countries, but this is also changing now very much. You could see it more before, but now with the computers, with all kinds of different openings analyzed, played. So no, I wouldn't say so much that you have, uh, not any longer, but before you could see uh, and I always thought that plays from India were very, very positional. Maybe they also are still, um, but, uh, maybe also from Cuba, they were normally also very positional. They had uh, the, the world ex-champion, world champion Capablanca, Raul Capablanca, who was very, very good also in the end games, very positional player. Actually, he was also known to be a good dancer. But um, uh, yeah, I would, but now I wouldn't say that there are a special way of playing from different countries. I think it just has been ch changed a lot with the computers uh, in coming into the chess, which are huge library is also a coach you can have. So it just helping so much, make it more fun for most of the players to work with chess. We can use the computer. You can get so much, much material um, very quickly. And it's also a very beautiful way of seeing games when you can see them online, like we are doing now. Anna is thinking of the queen is seven. I hope for bishop e2. I hope she will start develop her king side. Otherwise, it could be dangerous. It could be dangerous. So this is absolutely what I want. Bishop a5, I don't want her to play. I would say that would be a mistake. I don't like this move, bishop a5. What would be happening here? Queen comes here now, and now we have e5. And now this, where is she going? No, this bishop a5 would absolutely be a mistake. This would be a mistake because there are bishop before coming. So she needs to do bishop e2, just develop. She needs to get her king into safety. It's also a little bit unpleasant to have the queen and the king here on the same line. So you like to put this here. And not why I don't want to go to d3. It's because after later e5, there could be a fork on e4, but it could also be that you get c4 with a tempo. So this is why I prefer this bishop here on e2. I just think it's it's fine. Also, even if you go here, if a knight e4 comes, you don't really want to take the knight. So the bishop is better on e2, um, defending f3, and open up for castling. And it's also closing this line for the queen, which is looking down to the king just yes, now.
And the Open Tournament in Menorca is a tournament open for all players on different levels. You just need to be in time to put you on the list so you can play because uh, it's uh, that there always limited space you normally you have a playing hall but it's not space for everyone to be there so I think that can have it's, it's close to 400 players and Anna now is playing the seventh round she's playing against Ko Nugin uh, from Belgium he's a very young player born 2012 and he has played very interesting here Anna has a pawn extra but she's behind with development and she needs therefore to go out with a bishop she needs to put this king into safety very very quickly so let's see what she will play here absolutely but bishop e2 bishop a5 would be a big mistake and there is no taking with c5 no don't take away the tension he just kept the tension so we can see he's a strong player he see this he keeps the tension he doesn't care any longer about the b6 pawn he wants to open up in the center so he brings his queen closer to the king also to defend c5 and also uh, when he let's see if we go here i just want to show if anna would take here takes here let's see he take with the queen then there will be now we actually have bishop c3 this would be good so this is not the right probably you will have to take with the bishop but here we actually can take on c5 what did anna play did she play bishop e2 did she play no this is my position at the board what did she go what did she play she has played she played a3 oh no i don't like a3 a3 i don't like this is too slow move a3 no i don't like this move a3 this is not such a good move to play a3 is too slow uh can it be their opponent will take on d4 now anna takes i don't know what she should take can it go e5 here now how would the position be like this we need to go bishop e2 but now we have e4 no i don't know if i like this position so here now we have g6 coming here now i don't know maybe queen b maybe this is possible to play but it gets very very tactical a3 was a very slow mo and the move i don't like you're not scared of bishop b4 but Anna wants to go somehow bishop a5 but a3 is a mistake I would say uh, a3 is uh, um, it's not the best move absolutely because now her opponent can go c4 and a3 is hanging what is she going to do after this now what is she going to do after this she will go bishop e2 but rook b8 she wants to go bishop a5 to play like this bishop b7 but we have a long plan like this castling and now we wants to go bishop c6 and we will grab the pawn back so this will be about an equal position a3 was not the best move the plan is to stop b4 but a3 after c4 we can go b3 but we will lose the pawn here now now we will lose the pawn and now maybe you will keep this close so no this was not a good move i'm sorry but Anne has played so well until now but she was bothered by bishop before she's forgetting about her king so this is the position a3 she played this is a very slow move and mm, I'm a little bit worried now I think c4 is the best move because c4 is good with opponent a3 c4 was not good before after c4 yes I think Anna will go something like this but bishop b7 and bishop c6 will be coming no so she needs to go bishop b2 and now we have this plan bishop b7 and bishop c6 we will take and we'll take on b6 also a3 makes b2 pawn much much weaker so this is what i wanted to say when moving your pawns this if if uh, if her opponent managed to take back b6 sorry this is like this he will this one will be weaker when she played a3 this will be weaker when she played a3 so mm, it was not uh, the best move but there is a logic behind it she want to stop the bishop coming to b4 this is why she played this but uh, she also needs to put her king into safety so uh, let's see but if her opponent takes back she will be more weak on the queen side because she played a3 the pawns are better like this because she can play b3 but if her opponent goes c4 now she will absolutely be weakened more weakened here on the queen side so let's see what is going to happen but anna didn't she has been spending some time she's down to 50 minutes 
and she wanted to stop bishop b4 but bishop b4 was not ever a threat coming it was near not really a threat coming so queen e7 was a very i would say a logical move for him to play he can go a5 if he wants to but there is no need to do c4 is a very good move and he has this plan bishop a4 bishop uh here, I think bishop b7, you can come here now. And I don't know, but if you come here, if you go bishop c6, are we going to come back? But we will go rook fb8, and we are going to grab this pawn. And now you see, this is a weakness. This is absolutely a weakness here now, this pawn, because you have this square here now, and you can't get into the center. So this open fight will actually help black now. So let's see, what will he do? Will he play c4, which is just a very, very good move? And C4, you are, you are using this fact that this is a hole here on B3. You are using the fact that it's a hole on B3 and that you here after C4, this bishop and this queen are always looking A3. This pawn will always be hanging. And that's why, uh, so that's why the pawn is worse on A3 than it was on A2. On A2, there was no one attacking it. We can go B3, everything is defended. But on A3, when we go B3, this one will absolutely be uh, be hanging. So let's see what uh, her opponent will play here now. But it's absolutely possible after c4, and I can go b3. Maybe this is the best here and here. And now her opponent should not take here. This would give her a huge pawn on b6. Maybe it's about, it's maybe not such a danger, but he can go c3. And I don't know how we should take it. Maybe we go knight e4. What are we going to do here now? No, we don't want to take it like this. Maybe we take like this, knight b6, and we have a position uh, like this, which is about equal, I would say. It's about equal. So let's see what he will play. If he goes c4, I guess Anna, will she go b3? No, I don't think so. I have the c4, she might go bishop e2, but if bishop b7 is coming, she needs maybe to go b3 here. Can she do that? Bishop takes, coming here now. How is the position like this? No, now we have time to stick to the pawn and black will be better because this pawn will be more important than the b6 pawn. You have knight e4 coming, it's open up in the center. So this is not good to play like this. So let's see, Will what will he play? He is thinking, I hope he will spend some more time he has played very nice moves here. He had played something which is also very difficult to play when you're young. You're keeping the tension. He has done it so well. He put it up his queen closer to Anna's king. And um, so he has been playing very well. Anna has been playing also very, very well. But she made a move now which I didn't like. She put the pawn on A3 and that can be a weakness. That can be something she can be suffering with for some time. So that's why I didn't like this move A3 that Anna played. This is the last move. Let us put it like this with a pawn on A3. But the idea with Anna was to stop bishop b4 from coming. She wants to go bishop a5, but she is forgetting about her king side, and I'm a little bit worried about this. c4 here. Can we now go? And now we go bishop b7. We are just going after this uh, here, castling. We will put the rook to b8. I don't know which rook we will go to b8. Maybe the other one. I have no idea which one is better. Knight take here. And we can tr start to, to get some activities. But I'm a little worried about this pawn here. And what is the bishop doing here? We're coming here. And I think, yes, that this position is absolutely easier for uh, black to play than for white. Because white can't open up the center. We can go b3, but then a3 pawn will be falling. So this is in position, it's, I would say, a little more pleasant with black. So uh, if her opponent play, this is the last move here. a3 was played. It, so no, this is the last move. a3 was played. Uh, if you go c4, it won't be. He could go a5 now, but what is Anna going? I guess she will go bishop b5. No, he will not allow it. I think he's on his way to move, and he played rook to b8. He played rook to b8, and this was actually a bit surprising move. His idea is to go, if Anna comes here, what is he going to do? He will go c4 to play this position. This will absolutely be fine. And I think Anna will go here, but maybe it's better for her to take like this. Could this be, and now to go bishop a5? I have no idea if this is better or not. No, I don't like this so much. Um, 
she can actually take here bishop takes and she can go queen c2 what is happening you will take here now and we'll bring bishop b4 so this is actually very good to take on c5 will anna play this take here take take and bishop queen c2 what are you going to do you need to go back with the bishop to d6 and now anna can try to keep the pawn you have bishop b7 but she's just one move too late we have a rook f to c8 and we will have to play a position like this rook c8 and we will move away the queen and you are trying to blow up the position it could be i have no idea what is happening here now and castling and we this knight f4 what is happening this is getting some craziness now it's so dangerous yes but um let's see will anna take on c5 this is absolutely the best move to be played here Anna played a3, her opponent went rook b8, this is not the strongest, bishop a5 is not a good move, the best is to take on c5, maybe go bishop e2, but then her opponent can go c4, her opponent can go c4, but taking here is actually nice, you take and you go here, and the idea is you're hitting the bishop, if you come here I guess we will go yes bishop d3, if he takes I think we will yes take on c5, and we are having a uh, we are having actually an end game. This is very far. Rook take b4. I'm not sure we're going b4, but this is a lovely end game to play. We go with the king to d2. We keep the king in center and bring in the rook. And the pawns are in black. We have white bishop. Remember it with white square bishop, the pawns are better in black. They're controlling more squares. This is very far away. This is very far, but this is absolutely the best Anna can play. Rook b8 was played. So he's planning to either to take on d4, I would say he's planning c4. He's planning c4 and then take back the pawn. So he played rook b8, rook b8. If Anna, Anna can also play bishop e2, c4 and bishop a5, but we have this plan of coming here and now, I don't know, knight e5, I don't know what. If you go b3, we would have this here and you remember we have rook we have bishop before no we cannot play this this is absolutely out of the question with the bishop on a5 so this is very scary i'm a little scared and i go bishop a5 i sorry this is the last move rook is on b8 i'm getting very excited but the plan with rook bait is to take back not now but very soon maybe i think the plan is to go c4 and then take back the pawn and if bishop comes to a5 black has this plan of going c4 first and then bishop b7 bishop c6 this is also the plan and then uh, when the knight goes away you can take back the pawn so in the long run now when a3 was played i would say that anna can never stick to the pawn any longer she will lose this b6 pawn but i hope she will lose it in the best condition possible and the best way is actually to play like this in a position like this you never take with the bishop we can also see that this would be tremendous to get into a pin like this but we also remember that when we we be always careful changing a bishop against the knight sometimes we do it but a lot of time we prefer and this idea queen c2 threatening bishop if you come here we have bishop b4 this is very good you need to come here and now you can try go for the pawn you can also try to play something like this but we have bishop a5 i have no idea what is going to happen here knight c6 queen e8 and we can grab on a6 oh this is getting so many tactics where is the rook going i have no idea this is absolutely winning for white so let's see if anna takes on c5 this is a very good move to do i hope she will do that because she will also be able to bring in some pieces so i would love her to play like this here queen c2 bishop d6 maybe this move what is her opponent going to do he can go bishop b7 probably but we have knight d6 and if you take we take back we're not scared of a move like rook c8 because we would just grab it and this would be absolutely i will just show it a winning position so let's go back very very far away but i hope anna take on c5 this is a very move, very important move this is a very good move to play actually uh, let's see if so rook bait was the last move and it is a little bit 
to win some time and actually um, so also to stop the possibility for black to go in c4 so taking on c5 is a very good move will Anna do it bishop a5 would be a mistake I think she will be uh, black will get the little more uh, better uh, position if she goes bishop a5 because this pawn is not possible to keep in the long run black has a very slow has not very slow but a plan of going c4 bishop b7 bishop c6 and yes taking away and bishop a5 came here no this was not a so good move now after c4 anna is yes i think she's going to get maybe uh, get because we've had bishop b7 and maybe this is the best move now here but how can you ever play like this i think this is no this is not i wouldn't like to go play like this to give these pawns here so bishop b7 i think now so bishop a5 was played but uh uh, this is the last move, but now if her opponent goes c4, I think it's a little more pleasant for black. I think this is a little bit pleasant for black because he has this idea. You can also go bishop b7 here if you want to, but then we can take, we can come and take here and we just, maybe we even go bishop b4, d6 here, and we are, I'm not sure about b4, but we can do that and we are going, we're playing like this. And we have a plan to go a5 and b5. Even if we could even sometimes maybe even put the rook on c7. Maybe even sometimes if we get something more. So this is absolutely fine to play. But she needs to take on c5 if she can do that. So bishop a5 was played. And we can see Anna is playing here on this side. But um, she's forgetting about her king. Can her opponent try? No, this is not good. We go take with the knight. We get in the knight to c6. This would be a mistake to take on d4. But c4 is the good move. And this would not be so good because Anna has one more extra chance to take on c5. Bishop a5 was played. And it's according to her plan, but it's too slow. It's absolutely too slow. If she had had bishop b2 castling, this is another thing. But she's behind on the, with the king. She's behind with the king. And then this is a slow. And black has this very beautiful plan coming here and bishop b7 bishop c6 and i don't know how anna she needs to come here bishop b2 we go bishop c7 if you go castling we go bishop c6 and what are we going to do in a position like this could it be that anna wants to go b4 but i'm wondering in a position like this knight take b6 black is having an extra pass point here black only black will be better in this position no we cannot play this absolutely so let's see what he will play bishop a5 was played anna has spent like 42 minutes her opponent is down he has 51 minutes he has a little more time than anna and we know that anna is normally like to spend a lot of time and it's because her mother me i'm also the same i am also a slow player and it's because we like to calculate a lot of things. We have these long plans. Anna is playing according to her plan, but this plan was not the best she is choosing, but she's absolutely playing according to the plan. And of course, it's better to have a plan than not a plan at all, but it can backfire because she cannot stay with the pawn on b6. She cannot stay with it a long time. So Anna is playing against a very young opponent. Koi Nguyen, I'm sorry, not easy to pronounce. He is... Uh, born 2012 he's very young but he has been performing very well in this tournament he has also been performing very well in other tournament and we should absolutely not uh, underestimating he has been playing very nicely here now and i would say if he goes c4 he will have the little better uh, position it will be uh and i will get into problem i would say i would just say i don't know how really to play against this because this pawn is so weak castling now we have this move here and what are we going to do maybe we need to come here knight take b6 and we will need to go maybe knight e5 uh something like this and just what are we going to do i don't know maybe rook b1 and we try to get in b3 in some moment you will just try to challenge this knight and we go maybe something like f4 f6 and this position is getting more pleasant for uh, so i don't know maybe us to take 
take on D7. But this is very easily getting more pleasant. Maybe we can take here, but then you take back and this is absolutely fine for black. Maybe we have to go with some B3 move. So the idea is that if you take here, we are taking back here. If you take on A3, we could have, we are taking back here. And this is absolutely getting equal. So it's absolutely, uh, maybe it's, it's equal still, uh, but black has no problem if black plays c4. Um, now bishop a5 was the last move played. Anna is getting uh, up now and it's good to go up. I uh, just hope that her opponent will think a little bit. But there are some players when their opponent goes up, they wake up and they just, uh, now I have to move. But uh, especially if they have been thinking for a very, very long time. And that's why some players when your opponent are thinking for a very, very long time, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, maybe even more, then they like to stay at the board. Because going up, there are some moments and then maybe their opponent realized that they should play. But Anna needed to go up and that is very good. You have to go up, maybe move your body a little bit, maybe take something more to drink or to eat, or maybe go to the bathroom. And when you play this tournament over the board, I said a lot of time, there is a huge, huge playing area. It's a huge playing area and you are allowed to be, to walk around in this playing area. So you can take, probably you can buy some coffee, tea, maybe some more water. And uh, you can go and look at the other games. And if you're smoking, you have a smoking area. So it's a huge area where you are allowed to um, where you're allowed to, to walk around. And some players like to sit a lot. Anna likes to sit a lot. We can see her opponent, her young opponent is also sitting a lot. He's so very fully focused. And also Anna and other players, they like to walk around. We have all our different way of uh, playing, uh, of behaving when we are playing our games. And I am one of those who also like to sit very much while Anna's father, Grandma Sir Juan Bayon from Spain, he's one who normally likes to walk a lot, uh, yes too, but even though he's walking, he's very fully focused uh, full focus on his game. So this is the seventh round in Menorca Open, the tournament held for three, the third time. There are lots of players in this tournament. There are lots, lots of players in the tournament, close to 400, around 360, I would believe, about 80 in the B group. Anna is taking play, uh, part in the C, B, in the A group, which are about 270 players. And Anna is seated around 190, probably a little bit, 180, 85, maybe, something like that. So she is on the uh, second half, and you can see it's such a strong tournament with players. There one player over 2700, 2756. Uh, I mentioned him lots of time, Erigashi Aryun, or I'm sorry, so difficult to pronounce, he's from India. And then there are close to 20 players over 2600. So strong um, in the top, but there are lots of players, lots of players with titles, lots of other players too. Also players without rating or with low rating. And I just uh, like that when you all play together. They are playing nine games and um, against nine different opponents. Normally you are changed in the color. Sometimes you have to repeat, but if you once repeat black, then normally you will repeat white uh, uh, later on. So you will always have five, four with the colors. And this is one reason why it's a tradition to play tournaments with an um, even number and nine games it means you can make a norm. If it's seven rounds, it's not enough for a norm. If it's not an official tournament, they have made exception for the European Club Cup. You're playing only seven rounds and you can even make a norm with seven rounds. But getting a title, I think you need to have 24 games. It used to be like that when I was trying to become a grandmaster, but that is more than 30 years ago. But uh, you normally need to make three norms to get a title, but you also need to get up with your rating. And so for Grandmas, you need to have passed 2,500 or reached 2,500 once. And you also need to make one of your norms in an open tournament. When I was young, we needed to make one of the norms in a closed tournament, but they have changed the rules now. Her opponent is thinking a lot. Will he play this very strong move, C4? He, I would say C4 or Bishop B7. These are the two moves I expect him to play. These are absolutely the two moves I expect him to play. And what 
Uh, so c4 or bishop b7. Bishop b7, you have this plan of going uh, bishop to c6. c4, you are avoiding that Anna can take here. So after bishop b7, the best Anna can do is actually to take here, to play this position. But now she doesn't have and to go b4 here. Why she wants to go b4? If you go something like bishop e2, it could be that you go knight e7 and you will just grab this pawn quite quickly. You will get it back. And then it will be queen b3. It will be about an equal position, maybe queen d6, and we are going to take the pawn here. So, um, but it's also possible to play like this, absolutely. But, uh, so bishop a5 was played, and that's why c4 is a good move. Her opponent is thinking, I would guess he's going to move quite soon, because I think he will move quite soon. I'm not sure how our opponent has scored. I think he has made some draws also. I'm not sure. Anna has won two games. She has made one draw and she has lost three games. Uh, so this is both of them are having minus one. They have lost one more game than they have won. Two and a half out of six. And this is the seventh round. Eighth round will come later today. It's a very intensive chess day. Lots of chess today. And there will be the last round tomorrow. Last round tomorrow morning. And then the tournament will be finished. So both of them fully focused. Both of them sitting almost all the time at the board and uh, because and we remember also this is a game without extra time I can see that Anna is trying to speed up now he's he will absolutely play I think he will I think he will go c4 he has been playing so now Anna is a little bit ahead of the clock but I think he will move now because uh, it's quite uh, psychological to move when you're you're getting close to your opponent's uh, time lots of players say I will I can use my time but I will not use more time than an opponent and now he's down to the same time will he be like that it looks like he's going to move here now he looks like he's going to move here now and what no he hadn't made it up his mind her opponent is born 2012 so he's 11 or becoming 12 this year he's a very young opponent but he has been doing well in this tournament he has been doing well also in other tournaments and no underestimating because you're playing a very young player not at all they are learning quickly they are coming quickly and he has been doing so well even if he is just so very young but i think he's on his way to move i think so now he looks focused again and I just hope, now he has less time than Anna, this is very nice to see. I just hope that he will keep on thinking, that he will spend some time. But he's making up a plan and it's very important, so he's doing well spending the time. I would say this is not at all a mistake. Um, he has spent some, could it be 10-15 minutes on this last move, Bishop A5. And he's doing right because it's one of these critical moments. And actually, if you're moving in pawn, uh, we remember they can go don't, can go back forward. He will never take on d4, absolutely. It would actually bring in the knight coming to c6. It's a hole, because a big hole here. No, he wouldn't do that. If he goes moves the pawn, he will go with the pawn to c4. And this is actually the strongest move to be played here. This is actually the strongest move to be played in this position. C4. And the idea with C4 is actually avoiding that Anna can take on C5. We have this plan. Bishop B6, Bishop C6, Bishop here. And Black doesn't mind to change this for Anna's knight because this bishop, look at all the pawns here. They're all on white. So they are actually in the way for this bishop. This bishop is very passive. So changing this knight, uh, this bishop for this knight, Black wants to. Changing this bishop for the knight, no, Black doesn't want to because this bishop is very active with the pawn on white. Now he's down to 40 minutes. Uh, now, yeah, taking on d4 would be a mistake, I would say. I would say this would be a mistake. Going e5 would also be a mistake because there is a pawn hanging on c5. No, you don't want to go e5. This pawn would be lost then. So e5 would be a mistake. Taking on d4 would be a mistake. 
um, bishop b7, it's just one of these logic and more. But then Anna has this very beautiful idea of playing and actually going b4. And uh, having a, this looks like a big pawn, but don't worry, it will come into the game here. Actually, I don't know if you have time for knight d4, the idea, maybe it's a little bit slow. I would say moving up the bishop to e4, if e2 would be good, he has to go castling e5, and we will have a position like this, which absolutely will be fine to play for Anna. It's no problem she has this bishop here. Later on, a4 and b5 might come. Not now, but now it's supporting, supporting also c5. It could be sometimes that you want to put the rook on, uh, that you want to put the rook on c7, even given a chain. Maybe sometimes, not at this moment. These are very far away. So of course there are mistakes to make. If your opponent takes on d4, going e5 is a mistake. There is only one very good move. I would say is c4, everything else will be Anna will be better, but I think he will play this very good move. He has been spending some, could it be 15, 20 minutes? I didn't look it, but I think he will go C4. We are, Anna is facing a strong young player. He will find this very, very best move. He's looking for the plans. So I think he will play this. And Anna is just very, very focused. She is very, very focused. And it's just such an exciting game to play. And we can see that Anna has played against lots of young players in the tournament. She has played against uh, uh, several players who are, who are younger than herself. And this is what happened now with chess. With the introduction of chess computers, the games are quicker. We have so many youngsters starting players also. In some countries, they like to use chess as a tool for developing, as a tool to use in the schools also. So it's not at all uh, strange that we see all these young players uh, playing. And we can also see that her opponent is, he's very young, but he has played the opening very well with very nice idea. He played it in a very uh, <clears throat> active way because Anna actually had almost the same opening as two rounds before, but her opponent chose a more active way of playing this. And Anna has played very, very nicely, but I don't like her plan now, but she is sticking to her plan. She's sticking to her plan and uh, it's a little bit a slow plan and this move. It goes together with bishop a5, but it weakens her queen side. It weakens her queen side and that can be a problem later on, depending on what her opponent will play here now. So the opponent's plan is to take back the b6 pawn. If he goes c4, Anna can never stay with the b6 pawn, so he will get it back. So this is his plan. Will he go for it directly? I don't know. But if he does it, he will be, it will be maybe equal, but Anna will have to find a way. She will actually have to find a way to going b3, I would say, uh, to blow, to open up the position, because if, if it, her opponent goes here, this, you see, this is weak. This is also weak. It's a whole of B3. And with open file, we have pressure here. So, and I am quite sure her opponent will play C4. This is absolutely a very good player we have. Now he's spending, he's actually having five, six minutes less than Anna, six, maybe almost seven minutes less than Anna. He's thinking, but it's one critical moment. Will he play the best idea? Will he do that? And I believe so. I am absolutely sure he will find this very, very good move. And here it looks like, is he going to play? Anna is also so very much focused, so very much looking at the board. Her opponent looks a little bit more relaxed. I just hope Anna is awakened because it's an early round and uh, Anna is, doesn't like so much to play in the morning. I, doesn't I don't like it so much either, but with double rounds, of course, you have to have an early, early round. And now, yeah, it looks like he is going to play. What will he do here now? He played e5. He played e5. But this is a mistake. And why is this the problem? No, this is not the problem. The problem is actually knight takes c5. This is the problem. Knight takes c5. Why is this the problem? You take here, bishop take here, and now we can go knight take e5. Is her opponent going for these tactics? 
this now this is not so good because knight e5 just taking here he went e5 so he goes for e5 this was absolutely shocking move for me and taking here maybe this is fine he wants to take like this and if you take on c5 b2 pawn will be falling but i'm just wondering now bishop c3 is not possible you have d4 so we will need to go bishop e2 so he went e5 but now d4 is very good so e5 e5 he went i couldn't believe this e5 he played for e5 now knight c5 is the best we can also take like this coming here and take here i'm just wondering can we do and now we can take on e5 maybe but bishop e2 looks very very good to play you don't have bishop b6 because we have this move he has to go here so he played e5 maybe this is a natural move to play i am a little bit uh, shocked here now i thought it was a big mistake maybe it's not such a mistake uh, because this would be a mistake for anna to play taking here bishop e2 because you have d4 coming and now she's actually getting into problems so it's very important what anna does here now she if she takes um so maybe this was not i said it was a mistake maybe it's not but Anna needs to take on c5 and will she do that will she play this I'm not sure can we take here now this is scary we have knight e4 what is happening here I have no idea threatening if you come here we have maybe knight take f4 this is getting yes uh, terribly this is actually losing because we have the rook on c1 this is absolutely so it's a little bit scary now after e5 i said it was a mistake it's not the best move at the board and but he wants to go for tactics and maybe it is normal if anna take here we can have this position and now anna needs to go bishop e2 she needs to play this because bishop b6 we will probably see the rook to d8 can we now take on e5 the idea we taken on e5 is that if you go bishop takes here we have knight c6 and we will take back absolutely so um so the best for anna is now to take on c5 if anna takes on e5 she will have problem she will get into problem if you play like this i will just show you here uh, no he will not take like this he will take with the queen and bishop e2 maybe can we go knight c5 i have no idea yeah we can play this we can play this. this is actually the only way of playing this we need to take this if you go bishop e2 we will open up the position here if you take here we will yes take back and now this is getting very scary we can't go castling if you go g3 we will go probably bishop e2 but probably in bishop h3 and it's not possible castling black would be absolutely winning here so it's possible to take on e5 but if you take on e5 you take like this black will take like this you need to take here and now her opponent wants to take on b2 how is this position we have knight a4 queen take a3 and this no knight a4 would be very difficult to play no i don't think anna would play knight a4 in a position like this what could she do bishop b4 can she go bishop e2 but of the queen a3 she would actually be getting into problems no this is is absolutely possible to play this but it's just not i don't know what to play bishop knight a4 now this is very scary to play i have no idea bishop b4 yeah we can can we do this yeah we can maybe play like this but she's behind with development so e5 don't take on e5 i prefer you to take on c5 and go bishop e2 will she find will she play this if she takes on e5 it can be very very scary so um he go he has playing this is also a logical plan e5 is stronger when anna has the bishop on a5 than with the bishop on d2 it is stronger uh, now so he went for e5 and if anna takes here her opponent will absolutely take back here but now we have this move so knight takes c5 is the good move knight takes c5 take here and we can take this way how are you going to handle this because after bishop takes we can just take here and this is absolutely a completely different story this is different now when we have this we go queen c1 we have all control on the black square knight takes c5 is the good move will anna find it knight takes c5 this is absolutely you don't want to take the bishop we will yes take it back we have so you need to take it here and now we have take on e5 will she find this fantastic idea taking here and we will take are you scared of something knight e4 no we have this fantastic fork here no it's not possible so 
this is the good way of playing. Knight take c5, taking back and take the pawn here. But this is absolutely very, very difficult to see. This is absolutely very, very difficult to see that you want to get away with the black bishop and you want to get away with his compact center. But I would say that knight takes and knight takes and the take on e5, oh, it's not at all easy to see. This is a move that you normally you, you would make automatically. You can see I was playing d takes c5, but this is the right way of playing. I don't mind if Anna spent some time here now, if she will find this absolutely fantastic idea. After taking here, can your opponent go e4? I'm wondering, but Anna can just move away and play this position here and here. We can even go knight b3, because now if you come here, we go bishop b4, we're winning material. You see the rook is standing here behind, but we have, and if you come here, you see we have this beautiful square. Knight d4, or maybe just bishop e2 could also be possible. Knight d4, we will have a friend of the queen e5, we have a move like knight c6, and this is just very good. So this is very far away, but knight takes c5. This is a tremendous move. So e5 is a mistake, but only if white finds the best way. The best way is to take on c5. Um, also d takes c5 is fine, but knight takes c5 is such a strong plan. But I would say strong players would absolutely find this. But will Anna see this sequence, which is very, very easy not to see. And the whole idea is to get away with this bishop from the board and to get control of the black square. This is absolutely the whole plan. So e5, sorry, this was the last move played. This was the last move played on the board. And yeah, Anna, will she find the best way of playing here? Will she find the best way of uh, playing? She will absolutely need to do something with the pawns in the center. She will take on e5 or she will take on c5. These are the only moves to think of in this position. I cannot see that she will go something else. No, she cannot. If she would go, this would absolutely be a mistake. We could have e4. Uh, e4, maybe we have knight e5, but it would be like this here and now e4. She took d take c5. This was logical, but it wasn't the best. She took d take c5. It was a logical move, but it's not the best because now you have knight take c5. And then I just want Anna to go bishop e2. Then I would like Anna to go bishop e2 after. Her opponent will absolutely take back with the knight. Her opponent will absolutely take back with the knight. And after taking with the knight, I yeah, Anna can go bishop e2, uh, but she can actually also go. Uh, I don't think she will do that. I don't know. I think she will actually, her opponent will take with the knight. This is the position. Her opponent will absolutely take with the knight. What I'm very scared of is that Anna will play this here and here. And now knight e4, this is scaring me a bit. What can we do? We can go something b4, knight take f4, king take f4, and we are having a king on the board. This is absolutely uh, crazy. This is absolutely crazy to have this. Now you need to go with the king other way. So this is very, very scary. I think this is what we will see. Her opponent has it taken back. Anna took, oh, sorry. I'm getting so uh, exciting. Anna took d takes c5. This her opponent will absolutely take back with the pawn with the knight on c5. But he's a little bit thinking. He is not um, such a quick play. But it's absolutely there's only one move her opponent can play. He will absolutely do it. But he likes to feel the position, and so he's going to play here now. And will Anna go for knight e5? I think uh, can maybe she will go for knight e5 here. Could it be that she wants to play this move? This could be possible. If you come here, we have knight c6, queen e4. What is going to happen? And we have knight b8. And we have some craziness here. I have no idea what is happening here. Can we go queen d4 or queen c4? I don't know which one is better. Actually, this is a mistake. You need to go queen c2. And this is what? is going to happen here now you will have a piece you will have a rook for two pieces and this is absolutely crazy this is absolutely crazy i don't think so i think her opponent will take here now Anna will absolutely and he did that he took back did he do that i think he has played that d take c5 was played uh, he played Anna took there he will absolutely take back with the knight after knight takes it could be 
Anna will go. I don't think Anna will go for this. Will she do that? Because we have knight take a4, knight c6, and we have queen e4. And now this is actually uh, getting good for her, but this is so crazy, this position. And after a move like this, rook b8, what will we have here? We have bishop a6, knight to b6, and we have a rook c6. Yeah, it's getting so much craziness here. So has he played? No, he's still thinking. He is still thinking here. Anna played d takes c5, but absolutely he has only one move to play. There is absolutely no other move to play. Any other move would absolutely lose the game. So um, he's a little bit thinking. Maybe there's something he didn't see. I think he's calculating that after this, Anna has knight to e5. She has both moves. And if you come here, we could absolutely last take here. You can go bishop b2, but we will just bring the bishop to b4. We are getting some threats and we threaten to take on b2. This would absolutely be fantastic for Anna. So this is not possible. If Anna take on, so he needs to take on c5. Anna took here, but he will need to take back on c5. And he will absolutely do it, but he's spending some time. Anna is down to 35 minutes. Her opponent is down to 32 minutes and Anna and her opponent they are playing in Menorca open a big big huge open in Menorca it's an it's an island uh, much smaller than Mallorca but it's on the, one of the Balearian island and it's um, big open it's held for the third time with 360 plays in two groups Anna and her opponent they both have two and a half after six points Anna playing against very young play he has been playing very well and he's born 2012 here he's thinking but he has only one move to do and he has done it sorry he has taken back the pawn there's absolutely nothing else he can do he took back here now now Anne has two moves to do she can take on e5 she can take on c5 she has two these two moves to do i think but she played bishop e2 here now bishop e2 was played so this is what she played she doesn't want to go for some more tactics and the question is should she have changed the bishop first no she just played uh, like this and what so she played and now uh, she didn't want to change on c5 and um, if her opponent because she didn't want her opponent to get um he didn't want her opponent. And knight it, bishop e2 is also a fine move to play here. I would say it's absolutely fine. Her opponent could try to go something like this. But after a move like this, we go castling. Knight g4. We are not really so scared. We have actually queen take d5. I have no idea. Now we have bishop b3. But I don't think you want to play. Maybe we go something like this. And you're not really scared of your opponent playing this. Because we lost the pieces these um, two knights are stronger than a rook and a pawn and actually black only has a rook and a stays with a b6 pawn so let's see anna played bishop e2 finally she's going to uh, develop her pieces she didn't go for grabbing a pawn she didn't dare to do it because she saw that there are pawns hanging on b2 she's very much far uh, behind with the development and finally she played bishop e2 which it was absolutely a good move also absolutely one of the good moves she could choose from and it's also because it's time to put the king into safety she needs to make one more move here and d4 is absolutely nothing to be scared of we could just grab the pawn we can take it maybe like this also if you want to i don't know maybe this is not the right way i don't know maybe he has to go also castling no not castling but we take on c5 and we will go castling and this pawn will absolutely become weak so has he played has he played net or not has he played no i think he will spend some time now i think he will spend some time after anna went bishop e2 because she played yeah he will not give away the pawn absolutely it could go he will it could be that he will go uh, bishop g4 could this be a move to be played bishop g4 and the plan is actually if anna go castling the plan is to go oh uh, yeah the plan is to go here i'm just wondering we have e4 now knight d4 we have queen e5 we're getting some threats here now and having a position like this but this is absolutely uh, and uh, maybe this is more dangerous than taking the pawn we will just playing like this b6 will be more important than others but there are some a uh, little bit scary things with queen h5 i don't know really what is going to happen here but this is very far away 
This is very far away. So in this position, I would say her opponent had lost her move. One could be bishop g4. One could be move within his knight to e6 to e4. Could her opponent take here? Uh, this could absolutely be possible. And now to go bishop g4, this could absolutely be possible. And in a position like this, maybe we go h3 here now first. And if you come back here now, we will just, uh, maybe even to take an h6, I don't know. But the plan is if you come here, you want to go e4. And this is absolutely getting good now for uh, black. This is getting good now for black because the king is very weak in a position like this. We have queen h5 and we see h3 is falling. This would actually lose. So bishop g4 is a little bit scary. What did he do? He took on a4. He actually took here on a4 and I think he will go now. I think he will go. He could go knight d7 but also bishop g4. I think this is absolutely a move that he will play and after, I think he will go bishop g4 and this is a little move that is scaring me. Actually actually bishop uh, here bishop g4 after bishop g4 it could be queen d1 is the best move and you go d4 and here we actually need to go can we go castling i'm not sure we can do that because we have d3 now this is actually scaring me bishop g4 after bishop g4 not h3 castling is best as possible but in a position like this we have queen e5 threatening mate here we go g3 and in a position like this queen h5 can we go the, we can go maybe knight d4, we have knight g4, we need to go h4. And if you try to blow up the position, we are bringing in our queen. And we are bringing in here, we can even take the piece uh, because after this we are defending everything. I'm doing it very, very quickly, but it's very important. If he goes bishop g4, I think this is the move he will play. I think he wants to play against Anna's king and he wanted Anna's queen to be far away. I think he will go bishop g4 here now, absolutely. And after bishop g4, I want Anna to castle. I really want her to castle, nothing else than castling. Don't put h3, uh, don't put h3. Bishop g4, it could be, can we go bishop a6, but this this is getting very scary. D4, I have no idea. Now we have to go maybe something like this, but this is getting very, very scary. No, I don't want to take the pawn. So this was played. This was absolutely played. And I'm scared of bishop g4 because it's an active move. And if Anna go wrong with h3, she cannot castle then afterwards. So, of course, after bishop g4, can she go something like this? There she do go this. But this could be, I don't know, and now knight h4. This could be absolutely possible to play. But bishop e4, no, this is getting so many tactics. I have no idea what is happening here. Knight here, and we're bringing it back here. Yeah, we can absolutely play like this, but we see that the king side is more weakened, but we have a knight close to the king. This is absolutely possible to play. So if bishop g4 comes, has he played? No, he's down to 26 minutes. And remember, it's 26 minutes for rest of the game. Anna took back the piece on a4. She just needs one more move. Castling. She needs to make castling and she will be absolutely fine. Just one more move to put her king into safety. I'm wondering, can we do a move like d4 here now? But can we do like this and just grab the pawn here? No, we can even go and we take it. And we will have later rook c2 just to defend. Actually, after bishop b2, we have castling. And if you take here, we would actually just take here. And this would be better for white, absolutely. Even if. So let's see. Queen take o a4 was played. Her opponent, and we can see her opponent played very quickly in the opening. He knew the opening well, he knew what he wanted to go for. And you see, Anna played very against a very young player born 2012. And he's on his way to move here now. He's absolutely on his way to move. I expect maybe bishop d4 or knight d7 could also be a possibility to play knight d7. But knight d7, I'm not so scared if he will play. Um, can he go knight d7 here? I wonder, is castling, could this be then go knight b6? After this move, knight d7. Um, and after this move, knight to seven, actually queen to seven is a good move. And the plan is actually, if you play like this, we have queen takes c8. And if you come here, you see, we will in the end win a piece. So has he played? Let's go back. Let's go back the position. He played rook to e8. This was a shocking move. This was something I couldn't expect him to play. Uh, I, but he wants Anna to castle. He wants Anna to castle. His plan is going here, e4, knight d4, 
queen e5, g3. This, but now there is no problem because the queen cannot go to h5. You can go bishop g4, but after bishop g4, oh, we have some tactics here. Oh, queen h5, what is going to happen here? We have some tactics. We have to go h4 and queen, knight e5, but now we will take it. So, oh, this is getting so tactical. He played rook e8. No, this was the move. I never expected him. What could be the plan? I hope Anna go castling, but he is plan is he want Anna to go here and he want to go queen e5 I think so he could if he wants to go d4 we will just take it here and take knight d4 no this is not possible this is not possible here we need to go rook f1 why is this not possible because we are having lots of I don't know why it's not possible we had queen e5 and we the pieces are hanging this is getting so scary so uh Let's see, rook e8 he played, he wanted, this is the last move. I could never guess her opponent was going to play this move. But the best for Anna is to go castle, it's absolutely the best. And if she goes castle, I expect her opponent to go e4, not to go d4, but it could be both of it, castling, uh, if Anna go castle, this is the best move. She needs to put the king into safety. But I believe he wants to play this and he wants the queen e5. We are threatening mate in one. You have only g3 and he wants to play this position. Now he needs to go with the bishop to g4. And I'm just wondering how a position like this will be. And the idea is he wants to take somewhere here now. If you go h3, the plan is to take on e3 here now. And if you take here, we would have a mate here. This would not be possible. But in a position like this, we even have knight c6. This is getting like some fireworks. I have no idea. But in the end, we take the rook and you can see this rook is hanging. This is absolutely possible to play. I guess we can even just take here, you take here, and we're bringing in a piece. Maybe a rook, maybe even a bishop here, and we are defending everything. So far away, but rook e8 was not a move I expected. I just hope Anna will go castling. And she played castling. She played it quite quickly, and this was very good. Anna is having almost 10 minutes than her opponent. This is very good. She needed to go castle. I expect her opponent to go e4, knight e4, go for a king attack. What could he else go? He can go bishop e4, but after bishop e4, is rook e1 a good move? I'm wondering, is this scary to play? Queen e5, g3. Can you take here on e2? Rook takes, and you go queen h5. How will this be? We will need to have this move. You, If you go knight h4, we have only one way to stop it. We have, and we have g5. What is going to happen? And knight f5 if you go away with the bishop what is this we are bringing away the rook i don't know rook d2 rook c2 somewhere maybe rook e2 this was a mistake i don't know rook d2 because after this we have this move and what is happening we have a check here and we're taking the queen this is so much tactics but he will absolutely go for the tactics i am sure we will see e4 on the board now anna castle he, her opponent is thinking a little bit this is the last move we will absolutely see e4 on the board or bishop g4 could be a possibility it could be he goes bishop g4 after bishop g4 can anna what can she do she can also go queen d1 she can absolutely go queen d1 after e4 we have uh, but if she goes queen one there is another way of playing this queen e5 g3 and grabbing this pawn but this was absolutely good for anna you see she has the bishop pack. she stays with the pawn on b6 she would absolutely be better in a position like this maybe i don't know maybe we try to keep the pawn maybe we go rook c2 maybe queen c2 we are this pawn is a very big pawn we're not scared of playing uh, some kind of end games even if we lose the pawn if we have uh, and, uh, even if we don't have an extra pawn. Anna is having an extra pawn. She made castling. Her opponent is thinking he's taking some time. But I guess bishop g4 or e4, these are the two moves I expect her opponent to play. He can go here. And I wonder what could we do here now? Um, could we bring out in the queen? This is not such important. Rook f1 is le very logical. e4, I'm just wondering. After here, g3, if you take it, can we take back? Be this is maybe not the best way taken back. This is the best way. But this is not so easy to play. Now we have actually king g2. So this is, we have this knight g4, oh, and now h3 is absolutely, we also have ideas like this. 
this is absolutely fine. This is absolutely fine. So what is it going to do? I expect her opponent to go e4 here. I expect her opponent to play e4 and he is spending more time. He's down to 22 minutes. And even if they're playing classical game, remember no extra time after 40 moves. They, her opponent has like 22 minutes. Anna has uh, close to 35 minutes plus the extra half of the half extra 30 seconds they are getting for each move they are playing. I am sure her opponent will go for e4. I absolutely sure her opponent will go for e4 in this position. He can absolutely also go bishop d7. It could be possible. Now, why is better bishop c2? I guess it could come down here now. And then a6 pawn is a little bit hanging. So I will, he will not really be ready to give it. If you come a move like this, we will maybe take it or maybe start with queen d2. No, queen d2, I don't, yeah, queen d2 is possible because after knight d4, we can always grab the pawn. So there are, uh, I don't think bishop d7, this is absolutely, he played a move, what did he do? But he played bishop d7 or knight d7. No, he played bishop 2b7. Uh, this was absolutely a very uh, surprising move that he played here now. He played the bishop here. So what is logical for me? Rook fd1 would be a logical move. Is he going for d4? No, we take it. After e4, we give back the pawn. We want to give just back the pawn. So he played the bishop to b7. He wants to get some tactics here. So if he can come here, can it be that he wants to play this? He wants to take an f3 and he wants to go rook e4 here now. But we have the rook here and what we, the queen needs to go somewhere. This is absolutely fine for Anna to play. This is absolutely fine for Anna to play. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. So bishop b7. I didn't expect that move. I must say her opponent has played some moves I have not expected. Could it be if Anna is scared that she can move the queen over here? I don't think um, this was the last move to be played. Sorry, the rook is here. Rook f1, it's even possible to go rook c7. I don't think Anna will play this and rook to c8 and to play position like this. But no, we don't want to play. She will not play this, not here now, even if this is absolutely fine. Rook f1 or rook e1, one of these moves I would expect this looks more logical to play, I would say, but rook c7 is also possible. For me, this is the mo move I would be considering. Rook f to uh, d1. He has to put more pressure here. What could an opponent try to play? Yeah, maybe he tries for some activities here, but now maybe, actually, I'm wondering, is bishop b4 a move to be played here? Is bishop b4 a move to be played here? But her opponent and the idea is that we want to play, maybe we go rook c6 here now, here and we play like this, but we are taking triple pawns and rook e6, this one will be hanging. No, this is not such a good way of playing. So I would say for me, moving the rook e1 or f1, f1 looks more logical for me. It absolutely, rook e1 is just taking away all these kind of uh, tricks uh, that, uh, but uh, actually I would just say uh, rook f1, uh, could it be, if you go here, d4 take, and if can we take here now? And now, can we go knight here now? Could this be some danger? Yeah, this is actually some danger in this position. Bishop c5. This is getting some very tactics. So he is actually planning on going d4, blowing up the position. So I wonder if rook e1 is this a way of playing because now d4 would absolutely be not so good. You are taking here and we could actually a bishop take a6 or anything. So I would say that rook e1 is the move I like most here, but it's not an easy move to play. And why do I want to go rook e1? I want to avoid this possibility because we would just grab here and change the bishop. This would absolutely, if you come here, I guess we are coming back bishop d3. This would be fantastic. So I like rook e1. This is the move I like most. Rook d1 is a more natural move, but after rook d1, her opponent will not go for e4. Her opponent will go for d4 taking here and I think your opponent will take here. I wonder, can we go queen take here? We can absolutely, can we play this move? We have rook bd8 and now this is getting scary. 
this is absolutely getting scary to play. Um, maybe we need to go queen e3. You are moving away the queen somewhere, and we need to go queen d3. And actually, a position like this is possible to play, but uh, we need to play with this. It's possible to play because we have the pawn here, but it's just getting not what you want to play. So rook e1 is the room I would like to see. But I think a uh, backyard, as the first rank here, that this is down here. So bishop b7, he is playing for an attack, so he's not going to play for the end game. And this is why actually rook c7 is a possibility to play. We have only a pawn to play like this, and then to go rook c1, and now we have taken away a piece that could be attacking, and after this we could go here. And after a move like queen e4, I don't know, bishop f3, and now he starts some tactics. After queen f4, yeah, we can defend it. But it's, there are lots of tactics here now. So uh, let's see. Um, it's scary. Uh, what will Anna play? She will not go rook c7. I wouldn't have played it either. I think we will see rook d1. I think we will see the rook to d1. Absolutely. And maybe rook c2. Could this be a good move? I'm wondering, can we go d4 here anyway? We are taking it. We are taking it. And now we can just take it with the queen. So rook c2 is actually a move I like also. Absolutely rook c2. It's a good move also to be played. I would say that rook c2 just to defend the bishop on e2. So maybe this is a move I like better than moving. Not rook d1. I like rook c2 better or rook e1. But rook e1, as I would say, is impossible. But I like to defend this bishop. Uh, so there are not some tactics. Her opponent brought the bishop to b7. He's looking for a kingside attack. He's looking for a kingside attack. And we can see that her young opponent, he has taken some time. Uh, he's not a quick player, but he's very patient. And that's very impressive with such a young years. And he has been playing fine. He could have played um, in different way, but he just decided for to play logical. He he tried to take the pawn back, but then he just gave up the idea, open up in the center, and now he's looking for a kingside attack. This was the last move played, looking down to Anna's here. And this, uh, sorry, this was the last move played. And I would just like Anna to defend this bishop with the rook. So rook c2 is the move I would like her to play. And rook c2, you're also planning rook to f1. I don't know, could this be scary? Could this be scary? Can we go here now? But now we have knight c5 and now knight b3. No, after a move like this, we need to go to here, rook b3. What did she play? She moved. What did she play? What I cannot see from here. What did she play? She played rook d1. This was a very beautiful move. This was a very beautiful move. I'm so happy. Anna played this very nice move. And I've seen in lots of the middle game she's playing. She's playing so nicely. She's finding this good move. And she see that there are some tactics. There are some tactics here. If you take her now, take and take. Now instead, we will just go away. Remember, this is a threat here now. This is absolutely a threat. If you go rook c8 here now, we can actually just take it because if you take here, <laughs> it's all defended. It's no mate. I'm a little bit making wrong. So d4 is not a good move. Her opponent could go for e4, but after e4, this would not be good. You can go queen d5, but you can see e3. What is this bishop doing? It's just blocked behind the pawns. There's no way to get the kingside attack because this bishop on e2 is very good defending against queen h5 and knight g4. And here Anna would have a beautiful knight on c6. She has yeah, such a nice position. Rook e1 was a very nice move to be played here. What am I expecting her opponent to play? I expect her opponent to go rook c8. Maybe this could be a move to be played. Anna can actually go even h3 here now. She can absolutely play that. What more could she be playing? I think there will be a rook to c8. And it's more logical to go with the rook b c8. So let's see what her opponent will play here now. What her opponent will play. I would say that if her opponent play this, I don't think Anna will give this air because after e4 here, coming here, g3, queen d5, you're a little bit scared of some sacrifices, but we can just go king d2 and we're keeping everything under control. We're keeping everything under control here. This is absolutely fine to play. So let's go back. Uh, let's go back. h3 is a good move also. If you go rook c8, he is thinking, he has played, he has played, he played rook to, he played rook to d8. He played rook to d8. And that was absolutely a little bit 
uh, shocking move. But he put the rook on d8, and now what can Anna play? So he doesn't want to change pieces. He wants to go for d4, a little bit saying, what are you going to play? So he's planning d4 now. If Anna go rook f1, he can go d4. Can we take it now? And he can take on f3, but we can take back. And this is absolutely fine to play this position. It's absolutely fine. There is, even if you have knight here now, we can actually take here. And if you have a check here, we will bring our queen here. This is. So bishop f1 is the move I like. But you have to be sure that you're not scared of playing this position. I like bishop f1, clearing for the rook. This you would take. And if you take here, we would just take back. We can also, maybe this is even stronger to take on e5. Maybe this is even stronger. We take here now. And now we can go. Maybe we can play different things, but just taking back. This is also possible to play because where is the sport king going? We have now also some, we have b7, we have lots of things. We can also bring maybe even queen h4 here if we want to keep some uh, here. But we have also lots of things to play here, maybe rook d1. There, this is just very good. So bishop f1 is the move I like, but she will be a little bit uh, concerned of letting the knight being here. What move could she be thinking of? She can go something like queen c2 also if she wants to. And uh, but her opponent is, is pl absolutely planning to go d4. This is what her opponent is planning to do in this position. But it's not really something to be scared of. Let's say we go h3, you go d4, take and take. And we would absolutely just take on a6. You're moving the queen somewhere and we would take the bishop. So you need to come here and we will go bishop d3. And this is just fantastic to play. This is just fantastic. This d4 pawn is not coming anywhere. We are blocking. Maybe you need to go something like that. But there is, we will just take it and we will put the rook on d1. Your, your pawns are so much stronger. So h3 is a move to play, but I don't think she wants to do it. A little scared of uh, something, but h3 could be played. I like bishop f1, but it's also not so easy move to play. Rook d8 was the last move. So her opponent is just putting all the pieces in the center and hoping that he can open up the center and to attack the king. And we can see that this was the last, no, no, sorry. This was the last move, rook date, that the bishop is looking down to g2. This bishop is also looking down to the king's side. Anna has a knight defending her. Bishop is also very close, but his plan is to try to open up for the two bishop. And if he wants to open up, sorry, for the two bishop, he will, sorry, he will need to go d4. If you go e4, he is only open up for one bishop, and this one will be locked. He will never go e4. If He will absolutely never go. I said this move, but it could be, are you scared of something like this coming and queen h5? Uh, no, we have queen d1. Knight g4 is no problem. We just go h3, and we are going to change the queens. So... Uh, this is not so bishop f1 is fine we are not scared for this we would just grab the pawn so i like bishop f1 h3 is also a possibility but i don't think anna will play it h3 is only to be not mate on the last rank but with this bishop looking here it's more like a waiting move i would say she could absolutely also go knight to d2 but then maybe e4 will come and then we will go maybe bishop c3 maybe bringing the maybe bishop c3 just yes, bringing the knight and blocking uh and just yes, blocking this uh, uh diagonal blocking the pawn on d4 no he will never go e4 uh, i don't think so only if he can get a very strong attack because e4 this bishop would not be playing no, I don't. Bishop d1, I don't really like so much bishop d1 here now because the rooks are not so much connected. So I don't like this so much. But bishop d1, uh, I prefer bishop f1 to stay here. Yeah, now you're stopping d4. Absolutely would just grab it. You will absolutely stop d4. This is also no problem. So you're stopping the moves from moving. But then I guess rook c1 would be a good move. And maybe the best is just to go back. And we have a position like this. And now it's black to move instead of Anna. So, uh, and then he can come back if he wants or he can play something else. So bishop d1 is possible to play. It just keeping the king maybe more safe, but the rooks are not so well uh, placed. The bishop is not so well placed either on d1. It's more defending f3. You're open up for, you're open up for the rook. So d4 is not coming. Uh, bishop c3, I don't know. 
because d4 i think it's no problem e take e4 we will go knight e5 and we will play this position we have this plan on knight e5 knight f4 um, this could absolutely be but this is also fine for anna this could be a way for her opponent to play also that if anna comes here i want to see here and e4 we go I think we go knight e5, we can go here. It's not threat, we can do something slowly here also. Maybe rook c2 or something. But we can also always go uh, always go with a knight to e5. And we are playing, we give back the pawn and we getting away with the black bishop from the board. So this is absolutely also fine to play. Rook d8, his plan with rook d8 is absolutely to go d4 in some moment. Queen h4, yeah, queen h4 would keep the queen closer here now, but then her opponent would have the plan of going queen d7, and how could this be? Could could he try to go d4 and some queen a4 high? Yeah, queen h4, also the plan would maybe, no, not go here. Queen h4 is absolutely a move to be played. If you're scared of the things coming on the king's side, you can put the queen on h4. This is absolutely possible to play. So there are moves, bishop f1, maybe h3, but I don't know. Uh, these are the two moves. Now I don't rook e2, I don't like it because this rook on e1, or either move in the queen. These are the moves I am thinking of. Bishop f1, bishop d1, I don't like so much, but you can also play it. Maybe h3, maybe queen h4, absolutely. This is absolutely if you are scared of what can be happening on the king's side. You can absolutely bring another piece to defend the king's side. And it could be that Anna wants to play that queen h4. It could absolutely be that. So Anna now is down to 21 minutes. Her opponent, she has the same time, a little bit less time than her opponent. They have only like 20 minutes for the rest of the game. It's getting so exciting and it gets very exciting very quickly when they don't get this half hour extra time. And this is the seventh round in Menorca Open. Anna and her young opponent, Koi Nguyen from Belgium. They both are having two and a half out of five points. Her opponent is born 2012, so he's a very young boy, but he has been performing very well in the tournament. He has been playing fine here also. In the end, he decided not to try to take back the pawn on b6, and he goes for a king attack on Anna. He goes for an extra pawn in the center. He's saying, I will push my pawn in the center. I will play against the king side, and this pawn is blocked. And if you enter the rook here and see some, you can do that, but then I will take an exchange. I will take an exchange and you have to prove that your compensation will be enough for that. So let's see what will Anna do. What are the moves I expect? Bishop f1, no, I don't expect bishop f1, but it's a move I actually like very, very much. I like bishop f1. This is the move I like most on the board, but it's very difficult to play. And after this, if you go, if you take back here, we can actually, we take the queen, you see. I'm not awakened. You know, you have to go e4 or take on f3, but probably e4 is the best way of playing here. And here you can move the knight to e5. You can wait a little bit because it's a pin here. You can play some slow move also. I don't know if you want to go something queen b3. I don't know to bring it over here, but it looks a little bit uh, strange to me of the queen b3. Maybe we have queen d7 and we are now bringing in and in a position like this I guess we will have rook d1 or we have rook c7 and you can see giving uh, we want to get this black squared bishop off the board so this is why I want to go knight d5 if if black plays this plan I want to go knight d5 has Anna played no she is thinking she played now what did she play what did she do oh I'm so so she played bishop b4, she played bishop b4, so she goes for having uh, uh, this, but I'm just wondering, if she takes here, she needs to take back with the pawn. If she takes with the queen, she will be worse. She will need to take back with the pawn, and after queen d6, she will have queen a5. So she played bishop b4, I didn't really look at this. Her opponent absolutely had to take on b4. This is the only move, and Anna needs to take back with the queen with the pawn if she takes she can also go rook c7 is she is she going to play to play this position queen take here here and rook take e7 how is this this is absolutely possible to be played but we are getting some high fireworks here i have no idea what is happening here now we have to take like this 
And in a position like this, uh, I would say it's about equal because of this F2 point. I don't think her opponent will absolutely take on D6. This is the only move he has. He cannot allow Anna have this pawn structure uh, change in the black squared bishop. So, so triple pawns are, yes, they are normally weak, but she goes for this. And after this, I'm sure we will see that she takes like this. What is her opponent going to do? He can go for D4 here now, but after D4, we have queen C4 here. What is he going to do now? He cannot go queen E6. I guess we have, we take the piece. Absolutely not possible. You need to go rook D7, and we can just yes, put some more pressure here. I have no idea what is going to happen after D3. We take here, we have something like E4. We are taking lots of pieces and we are getting down with another piece. And if you're playing like this, yeah, we will just grab it. So what is happening here now? This is absolutely, uh, after a move like this, we could actually just, we are stopping the pawn. This is very far away. Anna played bishop b4. This was her way of taking away the pressure. This was absolutely the last move and she played. Her opponent will take that. She needs to take back with the queen. If she takes and he did that, she needs not to take back with the pawn. She needs to take back with the pawn and Anna played it quickly. She take back because she needs to be able after a move like this, she will go rook c7. You cannot play it. After a move like queen d6, she needs to go queen f5. Is her opponent going to go d4? I think so. He will go d4. Can you now take on d4? But after a position like this, we have rook to d1. We are stopping this pawn. So what will happen in a position like this? I queen a5, can he play this? We have knight c7. What did he play? I think he played queen d6. Is this, I think he played. Uh, I think he played queen d6. I think this was played. Yeah, this is the move. Anna needs to go queen a5 to defend the, 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 she needs to go queen a5 to defend the move, to defend the move, defend the pawn. He played this, threatening to take the pawn on b6. He played this, a queen a5. She played very quickly. Both of them are having, and if knight d7 now, if this come, Anna will go rook c7 maybe, but there is actually a more stronger move. B5 is the strong move, or oh, this is the very good move. Because if you're taking, we are having, I don't know, rook c7. What is happening here now? We are open up the file. We are absolutely, if you come bishop c6, I guess we are just putting more pressure here. If you're coming here, we have probably, yeah, queen c3, or oh, this will be crazy. B5 is a very good move. Just to change one of them. Queen d6, queen a5. The best their opponent can do now is to go d4, and then actually Anna needs to bring a rook. Maybe Maybe, I don't know if she can go a move like this, if this is fine, but then it might be 95. There are some tactics. I think her opponent will go d4. And after d4, if Anna go queen c5, we have d3, and this would actually lose the game. This would actually lose the game. So let's see. Is he go for tactics or if he go for playing 97? d4 is a good move. And Anna needs now to put, can she put the rook here on d1? I don't know. Can she normally should take the pawn. This is absolutely the best. And if you come here, but if you come here, we have queen take d4. And is this still fine for Anna. I'm not sure. Oh no, there's a piece hanging. We have knight c4 and what is going to happen? e3 here now. We have, if you take here, can you just, we can take on e3 and Anna is actually losing. This is not possible to play. So this is actually very, very scary. I would say d4 is a very, very scary move here now if he plays this. He's thinking, but I think he will go d4 and after this I like to bring the rook here. I would absolutely like to bring the rook here. We have a move like knight d5 and can Anna now go, now actually b5 is a good move, but this is so impossible to see. And the idea is that if you take here, we are getting in the bishop to the game, but it's not at all clear. This is getting lots of firework and if he goes d5. So Anna defender upon the queen a5, she has this plan of going queen c5, maybe not. No, actually this is the move. If there are d4 here for coming, can we go rook c7? No, because you take here, you take and you have a, no enormous pause point here. You have not now here, but you start with e4 and this is actually you're getting this pawn here, bishop e2, d3, and you need to have the bishop on d1, but you have a terribly strong pass pawn here. This will be much stronger than the pawn Anna has. So if he goes d4, this was played. 
Anna took here. Queen d6 was played. He wanted to get out of the line, threatening the pawn. And I'm sure he's going for d4. And if he goes d4, I have no idea what Anna should do. If he goes for d4, e4 is. Can he go e4? This is a very good move. And after this, what is she going to play here? Knight c4, e3. And here we need to. This is actually very scary. This is getting very square. You need to go queen f5 here now, but you have rook d5. So this is absolutely very scary if he plays this. Will he find this very, very tactical sequence d4? Anna needs to go. I'm so scared he will play it. It looks like he's on his way of playing, but he has played so nicely. Anna got away with the black bishop, but she had to change it for her black bishop. She also got worse pawns than she had before. She wants to go queen c5 after, but and he played d4. He played this beautiful d4 more. And I would say Anna needs to go rook e1, but I think she will take on d4. She needs to go rook e1. And after taking d4, her opponent will absolutely go e4. And I wonder this e4, knight d2, uh, can we play like this? Now we have e3. I have no idea what is happening here. This is getting a bit scary. This is getting absolutely a bit scary. Can we go something like queen here now? Oh, it's getting a bit scary. So let's see. Will she take? I think he, this is the last move. He played d4. This is a very, very good move of the, her opponent playing. And he has played fine. Absolutely playing fine. Now this is probably the best rook either one. To put this rook here on d1 It's better to put this one and then the other one. But just to keep the other one active. Rook d1 is the move I would really like Anna to play in this position. And after a move like rook d1, if knight d5 comes, can we come here? No. Uh, oh, we have moves like this. Bringing the queen here now, I have no idea what is happening. It's just, but here we have some b5. It's just getting lots of fireworks. Here we will actually just grab here what is happening. We can take it back and this is absolutely fine. So. This is some fireworks. D4 was played. So I would say bring in the rook here. But I think Anna will take on D4. And I'm worried about E4. I'm sure he will go E4. He will not take back the pawn. He will absolutely go E4 if Anna takes on D4. So finally, she, he is getting this D4 um, played. And this is why he wanted to go queen D6, taking away the queen from this line. Also, after E4, if Anna goes here, I don't know. Is there some other moves we can go with a knight? Can we go knight h4? I have no idea. If you go queen d5, yes, we have knight h5. We don't care about this pawn, but now we have a blocker. And this is a wonderful position for white. This is absolutely fine. We are equal pawns, but this is absolutely fine for white. You want to block this pawn. Absolutely. So if Anna takes here, it could be knight h4 is a good move. If you now knight d5, Five. Well, but and now we have b5. Oh, this is impossible. This is absolutely impossible to see what is going to happen here now. What is going to happen? We have a rook coming up here and this knight f5 maybe bring it in. But we have pieces coming here. I have no idea if you can go queen f4. Oh, it's getting so, so tactical. So d4 was played. D4 was played. This is absolutely the best move in the position. Her opponent is playing for kingside attack, playing for activity in the center. So he's actually threatening to win almost the game with D3. Anna needs to do something about this pawn. I did a stop it with rook D1. We can see it's a pin. If you go here, we will just grab it. So this is one way of playing. And also if you come here, if you take here, I just want to show, and you want to go uh, here and you go D3, we can absolutely, we have rook C6, we have lots of activity. We can even stop it with E4. Maybe this is not the best way, but we can absolutely do some activity activities here now. This is absolutely fine to play. So we are not really so much worried about this. But let's see what Anna will play. He played d4. This was absolutely the best move in the position. And I would say that they have a very tactical position now and anything can happen. Anything can happen. So I guess Anna will take on d4. Rook e, this is absolutely a fine move to play. I would say this is absolutely a very good move also to play. But I 
Uh, but after that, 95 is coming, and now we have B5. And what is happening? You need to take it. Are we taking with the bishop? It could be that we're taking the bishop. If the rook is coming up here now, what is happening? We have bishop C4, but this looks really, really scary. This looks really, really scary. I have no idea what is happening here. Knight e5. Oh, now we have some checks here, and we have some checks. It could be king rook d7. I have no yeah, I'm making this all very, very quickly. It just works very well for white. But there's so much tactics. There's so much tactics. And so her opponent played this very good move, d4. Anna, has she played? No, she's thinking she's down to 15 minis. She's down to 15 minis. And uh, what will she play? It's just a very important moment. I don't know, rook d1 or taking on d4. If she takes on d4, her opponent, absolutely. He can take back, but this would not be such a good move. We can even take on a6. And if bishop takes a3, we just we can just take back and to play position like this. This is absolutely fine to play for Anna. This is absolutely fine to play because after rook d1, you have d2, we have b5. Uh, maybe even rook f1 here now. Uh, this is absolutely possible also to play because there are checks here. This is very far away, but this is also not. So let's see. D4 was played. Now we have some fireworks on the board. And I would say that anything can happen in this game. He played this very beautiful move. He is threatening D3 and having a heavy, heavy pass point here on the file. So Anna needs to stop it somewhere. She cannot block it and she, she needs to stop it. What will Anna play here now? What will she do? Rook to d1 or take on d4? These are the only moves I could see. She could also go b5. She could also go b5. And after d3, she take on a6. This could be possible, but I have no idea what would be happening here. Could we go b7? This could absolutely be fine. So she can also go b5. b5 is actually a move of playing. She played the rook to d1. This is absolutely, absolutely fine now to play. And now her opponent only have knight to d5. And then we have so much. Um, I think this was played. Wasn't this played? I'm looking from the side. I think... She played rook to d1. This was absolutely a good move. Now the pawn is stopped. You can't go e4. We will take it. Absolutely, we take with the rook. This is not possible. You can't go d3. We take it. So rook e1 is probably the move I would play myself also. What will her opponent play? Anna is down to 40 minutes. Her opponent is having uh, 16 minutes and uh, not so much time when it's finishing the game. And this is so, so scary for both players, I would say. Can her go knight? Can it come here? But Anna can't take here. We would have... Could we go here like this? Then we actually we go for this. And these two pawns would be monster pawns. This would actually be fantastic. No problem to give away the queen. Also, if you take here, we would just take on d5. We can even take back and we take on d5 later. This would absolutely be possible. But after knight d5, if Anna takes, her opponent can take here. We take here. And I guess her opponent can play. Take on e3. We take him back. And uh, do we have some queen h6 here now? I have no idea what is happening. Can we go queen e2 to defend here? And this would absolutely get to something very, I would say, getting equal. Maybe e4. Are we going with the knight? I have no idea. Knight e4 looks very normal. But this is just so, so tactical. Very, very far away. Very, very far away. So let's see. Will he play knight d5? He is thinking. He's thinking. What could he more be thinking of? Rook f1 was very logical because you put, could he go queen to b8? But now we can go b5. Can we take here now? Uh, we can absolutely do it. After e4, we have knight e5. This would be just winning because you cannot take on d4 any longer. Has he played? No, he's thinking. Oh, sorry, he's thinking. This was the last move. Rook to d1. I shouldn't analyze too much. We need to have... This is the position at the board. And Anna played the rook to d1. And her opponent needs to go forward. He is having a pawn down. But, you know, these are triple pawns. So these triple pawns are not so important. But this pawn is important. You don't have this square on c3 for the knight. So this pawn is absolutely... He played. What did he play? What did he go? Did he go? What did he play? He played queen b8. No, he played queen e6. 
He played queen e6, but now Anna can take on d4. She can absolutely take on d4. And can he take here back? Anna can now take on a6. Does she dare to play this position here? This is absolutely no problem to play position at it. She can take, and probably if she takes here, could it be he wants to take here and go e4? But after e4, we can go bishop e2, e3 is coming, and we can actually even go f3, stopping everything. He played the queen to e6, he wanted to get away. Now I like just to take in here, and if he takes, uh, I don't like, Anna can go, yes, bishop c4, she goes here with tempo, he will come somewhere here, she can go h3, this is very important move, I just want you to see that this would actually lose a piece of the bishop here, but she can go h3, kicking the queen away, and if you come here, we will have queen g5, if you don't have anything else, we have queen g5, we are going into the end games, we are going into the end games, and we have the bishop here, this b, b pawn might be lost, but we will also take the d4 pawn, we have the bishop here, we are absolutely better here, so he played queen e6, this was not the move I expected, queen e6 was the last move played, I think Anna just should take on d4, I think she absolutely should take on d4 let's see if she will do that if she takes on d4 but this is absolutely a very normal move to do he cannot play uh, because he, if he if he push here now Anna will go 95 she stays with an extra pawn uh, she stay, she say she has a knight and a good square her opponent will not need to go 95 but you can maybe no this is I don't think this is and after 95 we might even be able to go maybe b5 maybe can we go bishop c4 perhaps also I'm not sure what what is best maybe even bishop g4 but uh let's see so she can take on e5 on and she's down to five minutes she's in five minutes she's down to 12 minutes this is the position and i'm sorry i'm getting so excited queen e6 was played and the idea for her opponent is now this is a threat again this is a threat so anna needs to do something about this threat he's threatened to go d3 and absolutely the most normal way is to take on d4 Oh, sorry, no, not to go e4. Uh, Anna is still thinking. She is still thinking here. The absolute normal is to take on d4, to take her. Uh, because this is a threat. She could uh, also start some fireworks with this. I have no idea what will happen after d3. We can take the rook here. What is happening here? And if you go e4, we will take on a6. So there could be some firework with b5 if she wants to. But after a take b5, we have bishop b5. I don't think Anna would uh, like to uh, play like this. Also, b6 pawn might be lost, but she will bring it back here now. And th this is absolute possibility to play also. So queen e6 was played, taking on... She didn't take on d4. What did she do? She played rook c7. But this is a mistake. Rook c7 is a mistake because now her opponent can take on f3. Her opponent can take on f3 and he will be uh, better. Anna, he can take on f3. He will absolutely be better now if he takes on f3. So this, because the idea, if, if Anna takes like this, he, we will have e4 coming where she has to go something like this. He can go g6. She will needs to come here and he will have this tremendous pass pawn. Anna would be lost in this position. She would be lost in this position. So if he takes on f3, Anna will need to take back with a pawn. Will she do that? Will she take back with a pawn and play this position? But this is actually a bit scary to play. Um, her opponent has e4. I have no idea what is hanging after this after e4, just trying to blow up the position. This, but e4, oh no, this is very difficult to play. You have something, bishop c4 here now, but now we have knight d5. Oh, this is very, very scary. I have no, no idea. But this, if you take on f3, this will absolutely give, get Anna into problem. And let's see, he's thinking he has a little bit more of time. He has a little more time. And this is what I thought, there's so many tactics. This was the last move. Anna wanted to go for activity, but her opponent can get the tremendous pawn in her. Either he can actually blow up the position, either he can, uh, she needs after bishop f3, which he needs to take it back. And like this, her king will be very weak. Now he has only one very strong move, e4. And this, and the day is after this, we want to go e3. And this is absolutely very, very scary. 
this is absolutely very scary to play. I have no idea how you're going to defend this. Queen take a6, king take here, uh, here, and we have knight to coming here. So it's just very, very scary here now. Rook cc was played. He took on f3. Anna took back with the g pawn. Anna took back with the g pawn. What will he play? Will he go knight d7? If he go knight d5, I think this is expected. The only move Anna can play now if he goes knight d5 is actually to go b7. But I don't think she will play this. She needs to play a position like this. And it's about equal in this position. This is about equal. But will she find this move? I'm not sure if he goes knight d5. I think this is actually what I expect him to play, to go knight d5. But e4 is a very, very strong move. After e4, Anna needs to go b7. Now this, I have no idea. Are we going d3? What is going to happen here? This is actually very, very scary. Now we, we need to bring the queen here. Maybe we can play something like this. It's getting so scary. So e4 is a good move, but I expect her opponent to go knight d5. And if he goes knight d5, what is Anna going to do? If she goes bishop c4, no, there will be a check. No, she has such a bad king now. So there will be a check then. Knight d5 and after knight d5 can i think anna will go rook a7 but here after e4 this would absolutely be so so scary this would absolutely be so scary to play this position can she in some way defend here i have no idea if she can be able to defend this position um, maybe maybe not it's just so so tactical so this is he was taking because in a tactical position it's very important the tempo i am sure we will see 95 coming i'm sure we will see this but e4 might be a better move after e4 maybe anna should go for some b7 but and we will have fireworks on the board this is not so good we're taking it back if you take on e3 we will have some tactics here taking here and queen e1 we are actually defending everything and this is very very good for anna because after this we have a uh, fantastic rook this seven more but this is so far away this is so far away he's thinking now and this was very logical ye take f3 this was very very logical to take on f3 and i played a two active mode she didn't want to take on d4 this was absolutely the best move to take on d4 now she he can play 95 or e4 anything else i wouldn't be so scared of if the queen comes to h3 uh maybe we can even go queen h here and we're trying to get the king closer uh what could the idea be here um this this is absolutely fine. No, Queen H3 would not be seen here. Absolutely not. I think we will see Knight D5. He's thinking he has about the same time as Anna. And I think we will see Knight D5. This is very logical. Knight D5. And then the best boom is B7. But there is no chance Anna is going to play B7 after Knight D7. Uh, after Knight D7, I think we will see uh, we will see Rook A7. And now maybe what can her if her opponent comes here, we can come here. We have a check here. King is coming to F1 to defend here now. And what is this happening? D3 is this. We need to take it like this and we will need to go rook take b6 and this would be an equal position like this and we are oh we have so many fireworks oh these are so many fireworks and let's see let's go back this is just crazy uh but it's yes so 95 i'm sure we will see this is position the board her opponent took an f3 her opponent has played and he he took on e3 he took on e3 this is a mistake this isn't a mistake. He took an E3. Anna can now take on D8 and go B7. She doesn't care about the pawns. She doesn't care about the pawns. Just take on D8 and go. This is not so dangerous any longer. He took on E3. This was a mistake. So what can Anna do? Just take on D8. But will she do that? We will probably see this move happening, taking back. And now we can go queen c5. We can, can we go b7 also? No, we have knight e4. Could it be that in this position, this looks very normal. So what will Anna do? I, he took an e3 
And I think um, I think Anna will take back here now. How will this position be if you take here and come here? How is this position you have? I have no idea what you're going to do here. I have no idea what is the plan. I think Anna will take back on E3. This is because she doesn't want to give the F2 pawn. She doesn't want to do that. But maybe Rook take D is the best. But he took on E3. This was not the strongest, but he wants to get a uh, uh, he wants to open up more the position and it's also a little bit in if Anna takes here he will absolutely take here I would say he can also go something like E4 I have no idea what is happening but we have this position and maybe we will go rook knight to c5 we have some threats and you see this rook if you're coming here we are defending everything the queen is very good you can kind of bring in the rook you're playing b7 and queening this would absolutely be fantastic to play let's go back let's go back so he took on e3 this is the position this was absolutely so and anna has played what did she do i think she took did she take back or what did she do now after taking there what she do? She took on D8. She took on D8. Ah, she took on D8. Oh, sorry. Or have I played? Is this the position? Did she take on D8? I can see. Yes, there is a rook on D8. I don't see it so well. And um, this is the live board is working well. This was the strongest move. And after now, he will absolutely take on F2. Take on F2. And after this take, now B7. Is it, is it a good move or not? It could be that he have knight E4. He will have a perpetual here. He will have a perpetual. This is absolutely his planning. So in a position, he will absolutely take on F2. And after this, if Anna goes somewhere, King F1, no, this would absolutely not be possible. She, this this will be happening he will take back we will have this move and now maybe the best is for Anna to bring the rook to c3 to actually bring the rook to c3 we will see something like queen h5 and now king g8 and she's absolutely very safe here now you don't have these things because we just go b7 this b pawn is very very good so we will absolutely see king take f2 he is thinking rook take d8 was the last move rook take d8 he's down to seven minutes Anna is playing more quickly it's very important that if he takes f2 Anna needs to take back I'm just wondering after this take here and take here can Anna go rook queen c5 no is this a perpetual now no it's not because checking here how can we escape after check here we have queen f2 so queen c5 is absolutely a move also to be played here it could absolutely be a move to be played but then we have queen h3 can we go king g1 and how is this position we train knight d5 we go b7 we have knight f4 we need to go can we go bishop f1 no queen f3 and this is getting a uh, perpetual why is this getting a perpetual because we have queen g4 check here all the time so this is what he will do he will absolutely uh, take on f2 but we can see that this young player you see, he's only born 2012, Anna took a D8, that he is <clears throat> taking his time. And this is absolutely, uh, uh, let's see. So it, this is, could be that this is the strongest way to play, but then Anna had B7. If he takes here now, Anna, yeah. No, this is not after this. This is actually a perpetual. This is a per perpetual. She cannot avoid any way uh, the... She cannot avoid anything here. There will be a perpetual. So this is actually, I think we will see him taking on B2, uh, on F2. This is position Anna took. He's thinking now. Now he's on his way to move. Oh, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. What will he do? Will he take back or will he take on F2? He has only two choose choices. And remember, we always look at the forcing moves first. The most forcing move is to take on F2. Anna will need to take with the king. Her king will be more weakened. Her king will be more weakened. Uh, not awakened, more weakened. So let's see. I'm sure, he, I, I'm so surprised he hasn't played it before, but it's so logical to take back. But it could be that he will take on D yet. And that he has this capacity, capacity to think in this position. It shows that he's a very good player because he's very young and it's normal that you're very young that you want to make the move quickly. But no, he takes the time. He's down to five minutes, but he has played a very fine game. Anne has also played a very, very fine game. And what did he do? No, he hasn't moved yet. He's down to five minutes. Anne has more time than her opponent. I'm happy to see that. But there are still some fireworks on the 
mom and he took an F2 and Anna took back. This was absolutely necessary and now he will absolutely take the pawn. And what will happen now if he goes rook d8, it could be he played here and now I think Anna will go b7. But if she goes b7, it won't be a draw. If she goes b7, he has the chance for a draw. So I really hope she is not going b7. I really hope she is not going c b7. But she goes b7 and now after b7, he has and does he have a draw? I thought this was, this is absolutely a draw. Uh, absolutely. What can she go? She cannot go. If she comes here, this could absolutely be losing the game. So if she finds 94, it will be a perpetual. It will absolutely be a perpetual if Anna don't go into a mate. Knight f1, a king f1, we have queen h3. And what uh, king we have? What can he play here now? He can actually go. I have no idea. Can he go knight g3? Maybe king f1. I have no idea. Queen f1, king g1 is still absolutely fine. It's fine. Could it be that b7 that after king f1, what is he going to play? He needs to go here. But we have then king king e1 or king g1. I have no idea. Maybe king e1. And what is happening? So after knight f4, if Anna goes king f1, it will absolutely be still possible to keep on playing if, if he goes here. This is the last move play, b7. Anna is threatening. What is he threatening? She's threatening lots of moves. Actually, rook d7 is a threat to do. Uh, rook, rook d7 is not a threat, sorry. But maybe just uh, rook c6 is a threat. So she's having lots of threat. And if she comes here, we will go queen g1. This is absolutely king g1. No. After this, we will go queen take e5 and we're defending everything. So this is not a possibility. This is not a good move. We had queen take e5 and we are defending every everything. So I thought this is a perpetual, but it's not sure. This is actually, uh, it's not sure. After knight e4, Anna we needs to go king f1. And can her opponent have, after this move, we have the king to g1. And we see there's no time to go up for, for a mate because we just yes, take a queen and it would be, uh, yes, finishing it. So, oh, it's so exciting here. B7 was played. Her opponent down to four minutes. Anna is having 12 minutes. So after this move, coming here, king g1, uh, king f1, coming here, we have king here. And is no, we don't have king here. She needs to go. No, this is absolutely, if you come here, your opponent has queen h4, and we cannot defend against this. Uh, we cannot defend against this. If you go something like this, she might even be losing. She actually will be losing the game. This will be losing. So after 94, if this comes after 94, I would say Anna needs to take it. This would absolutely be very scary to play. I don't know why could she go here. She, King g1, we have queen h4. And what do we have here now? We have queen b6. I have no idea what is happening. Queen b6. We have a check here. We're coming here. And what is happening? Oh, this is so much firework. So will Anna keep everything under control? Oh, it's so scary. Will he play? He played knight e4. He played the only move he could play. If Anna takes the knight, it will be perpetual. Only king f1 is the only way to keep it going. It looks like she can win. But if she goes wrong, she can also be mated. If she takes the knight on e4, it will be a draw. He has a perpetual. She doesn't have a way of escaping uh, the king because we can see if she takes here, we have queen f6 coming here. We have queen g5 coming here. And after queen f4, we have also this. There is no way to get this bishop hiding. She, she, her pieces are too far away. So if she takes on e4, it will become a perpetual. It, does she dare to go king f1, queen h3 here? and king g1. I don't know what is the best move here. Could it be uh, king f1 is the only way to keep it going. If you go king g2, we have actually queen g6, and this would be our perpetual, because king f2, we are coming closer. And whatever Anna is doing here now, we are getting some perpetual here. Now, if you go rook c8, we have to be a little careful. This is absolutely, if you go here, I think we were losing. It will be a mate here. Wouldn't it be a mate like this? So 
uh, yeah, this would be absolutely uh, losing. It's not possible. So I'm a little bit scared here now. I, I don't know what do I prefer Anna to do. I, of course, I prefer Anna to play King F1. King F1, I'm not sure what is happening. King F1 is the only way to play this. Will she play this? But I think King D2 could be tempting, but it's not better. King F1 is absolutely the only way. But is it a draw or not? I'm not so sure. We have this. If you comes here, King G1. And if you do something like uh, Knight G3 here now, we have absolutely uh, lots of way of... Uh, we can even go queen take a6 because if you go here take there is no mate on f1 so this is absolutely possible to play absolutely oh it's so scary i think anna will go king f1 i think uh, uh i think anna will go king f1 but no if anna takes it it's absolutely possible but her opponent will give checks checks all the time they're not enough pieces she cannot run to the d line this rook is very good on the d line she cannot run to the d line so her opponent will give checks all the time so it will be a draw if anna takes an e4 with king f1 she can keep on i have no idea knight g3 what would be happening here if you take here this is the draw again so if the knight g3 you need to go king e1 but this is absolutely crazy but it's absolutely very very good so if she goes king f1 i'm sure we will see queen h3 check here now and now king g1 is a good move and what is happening here this is just getting crazy i was scared of this move but after this move we have queen b6 and after this move we have bishop f1 so this is absolutely and if you go if you go something like this, we'll take it. Queen e1, can we escape here now? Because if you're giving checks here now, we have queen h3 and oh, but this is very, and don't take queen h6 here, check here now. Anna is on her way. She is thinking knight e4. I, she didn't see this knight e4. If she would have seen it, she wouldn't have gone b7. She wouldn't have gone b7. It would be better, maybe queen c5, to bring a piece closer to a king side. But she forgot about that her king is very weak. Her king is absolutely very weak. Will she take on e4? Then it would be a draw. Will she keep it going? Then it's, yeah, it, it, it will be. I think king f1, can her opponent save it? But it looks so scary here. Knight d2, this looks very scary. King e1, and can her opponent now go queen f6 to go queen h4? And this, we have rook c8. We have rook c8 because check here now, we have king d1. And this is fine. So in a position like this, we will need to go knight f3 check here. We taking, but after queen h4, we are running up. Oh, this is getting so, so scary all the time. But knight e4, king f1, it's the move for to keep it going. Knight e4 was played this was absolutely the only chance her opponent had knight e4 was played she has to go king f1 absolutely if she take the knight there will be a perpetual there will be a perpetual uh here we can see there is no way to come uh, to get out of the checks we can see you're coming here now we are giving checks here and if you come here now we have uh, we can even go no queen c1 but we have queen h4 can we keep this going can so maybe this is the way she wants to play but after this move queen f6 could it be that anna wants to go king g2 no we had queen g6 check here now and if she comes here we will just take an e4 so there's no way for her to hide away so let's see this is the last move played this is the last move play and anna she has seven minutes she will spend time here now will she take the knight if she takes the knight i'm quite sure the game will finish in a draw um if she doesn't take the knight anna can keep the game going but she has to be careful and it's so so much drama and you remember queen and knight against the king this is a very difficult move to play i would say king g2 is more logical move to play but after king g6 check here now we can see that this is a mate you're not allowed to play it you had king f1 here now and now her opponent can come here and you don't have anything better than to come here and something like this and here you actually have to be careful you will need to play like this otherwise i don't know if you come here now what not bishop take f3 i guess we will go some rook c8 and if you take here now we will actually have this is still a draw this is absolutely still a draw but there are so much fireworks all the time knight e4 was played he find this very 
only chance for staying in the game, only chance. So he's playing very lovely, this young player from Belgium, born 2012. He has made some mistakes, but he also finds some very beautiful ideas. And he he actually uh, gave a pawn in the opening, Anna stayed with the pawn. He could have tried to get it back, but he decided to play in the center and he wanted to go against Anna's king. And here we see his He's getting his pieces against Anna's king. Luckily, he doesn't have so many pieces. And Anna will need to decide whether she take on e4, then he will have a perpetual, or if she keeps on going. But if she keeps on going, king f1 is the way to go. This would absolutely be a disaster. This would absolutely be just losing the game. So she cannot move up. She cannot move up because this rook is also doing a very good job here. It's doing a very good job. And we can see that this rook and this queen is very far from the king's side. This bishop is not, uh, it's not enough uh, to save the king with the bishop when black has one, two, and also three pieces. Anna can take one, but then it will be perpetual. I think, uh, I think Anna will play on here, but will she find king f1? This is absolutely the best move. And remember, there is no extra time after 30 moves. And this is why it is very, very scary. It's no extra time after 30 moves. After king f1, queen h5, she needs to go with the king to g1. She needs to play like this. And this is actually very, very good to play. And after a move like this, Anna only have queen b6. This is the only way of winning is. But this is just... Uh, not difficult to see, but this is absolutely the only way. So what will Anna play? Knight e4 was played. What? They are both very low on time. They're both very low on time. And yeah, I'm getting nervous. I'm getting nervous. Anna can absolutely keep on playing here. But with three pieces close to her king, I'm scared she will go wrong somewhere. So if it takes an e4, this will be a draw. But king f1 would keep the game going. King f1 would absolutely be the keep the game going. But it won't be a little bit scary because of the king f1, knight d2. I think uh, now we need to come back with the king to f2. But now we actually have knight e4 again. And if we come in here, this looks very scary. This looks very scary, but it's absolutely absolutely fine to play because we have now uh, we have different moves but we also have queen c5 and we are stopping here uh, every, all the checks here we're absolutely stopping all the checks here after a move like this actually rook d7 is the only way of playing rook d7 but this is very far away will anna play king f1 or will she take the knight what will she be doing take the knight or king f1 i hope so other moves i wouldn't like to see on the board so not other moves this king in one could cause her into dangerous. Then we have queen here now, and now she needs to take on e4, and we will have all this perpetual here, all this perpetual very, very quickly. So let's see what is Anna going to do. She can go with the king to another square, but then he will get, uh, her opponent will get perpetual very quickly if she doesn't go to f1, if she wants the game to keep on um, going. Anna is down to two minutes. She is down to two minutes, and um, She's down to two minutes and uh, it's not so much time because they will not get any extra time. They only get this half minute per move and I'm getting so nervous. Anna was winning, but she played the last move a little bit too quickly. She forgot. She didn't see that there were a counter attack. She should have brought a piece closer to her king. Maybe the rook to c3 would have been a very good move. Yes, the rook to c3 would have been a fantastic move and there wouldn't have been any counter play. But she played this b7 very, very quickly. And now her opponent find the only move to stay in the game, the only move to stay in the game. Anna is down to 151. What will she play here now? What will she do? She will need to play quickly. I think she will not take the knight. I think she will keep on playing. But I'm, I just, uh, if she keeps on playing, it's getting so exciting. But she will have little time for the coming moves. And just to be, see if she will, uh, let's see. Does it look like she's on her way to move? I think she has moved. She has moved. What did she do? She took an e4 and then we will absolutely have a draw here now. She will absolutely have a draw in here now. And she can, can, can you go bishop f3? Can you go bishop f3? No, we have queen h4 here now. We have queen h4 and wherever you go with the king, we have 
king d1 here now we have queen h3 and if you're coming here now this would absolutely lose the game because you have queen d4 we have queen d3 here now this would absolutely be losing the game so she played she took the knight. queen f6 was coming and now if bishop f4 is coming queen h4 is this king g2 we have checks oh no rook d2 is coming she has to be careful for this so let's see after a move like queen h4 she needs to go with the king and after queen h4 she needs to go yes back back and forth like this so i hope actually she has moved the king here and yes go for the draw she's down to one minute i hope she will not uh, make a mistake here just go just keep going here just keep going back and forth and this is absolutely a draw but she has to be a little bit ca uh, careful here now bishop f3 there is only one move and it's this move and now she needs to go uh, she can go not king g2 this would be losing the game she needs to go with the king maybe with the king to f1 and here her opponent has two moves queen f4 or he could go queen h3 check and now anna can go king g1 and after more like this she can go rook c8 oh no she cannot go rook c8 this would absolutely be why would this be losing the position she would need to go something like queen d5 he has to put the queen closer and needs to draw but let's see what will she play king f6 i would actually prefer yes anna to move around here now and if we come here uh can we go king h1 here now yes we could play this but we had queen h4 this is absolutely uh, i have no idea what is happening here can we play something like this we have bishop c4 and what did she play she played what did she do she played what has happened uh, we have this position her opponent played queen e6 anna played king f king what did, did anna play king f1 here now we have i think this is the position oh, i will put it up on the board king f1 now here now this was uh, the position so if her opponent go uh, there is the perpetual now if he wants to can he take on e4 no taking on e4 would be a mistake if he plays a move like this Anna has queen c5 she's bringing in a piece and she would be winning he needs to go checks but he's thinking and he needs to go checks because he doesn't need a pawn this pawn doesn't make any chance different he needs to have to give checks and it's absolutely the only move he can play king f6 queen f6 is the only move he can play and uh and after queen f6 i just like anna to go back with her king to to g2 and to play this and queen f6 was also played let's see if anna now will go with back with the king to g2 and let's see if we will have a perpetual in this position or what they will do i hope anna will not try to keep it going she's down to one minute but uh, it's just uh, she's down to one minute what will she do king h4 is not improvement i think it just will make it worse just move the king back here now there just move it back what will she do she go with the king to g1 she is bringing the king to g1 and the idea is that if her opponent this is absolutely also possible for her opponent to play but she wants to come here and if you go he can go queen h5 here now and uh uh, yes to play this position but it could be some fireworks after king d1 anna played this this position he will come, come queen d6 and here we have a uh, queen d6 and this is just uh, this is what we had before this was played i think this was played on the board we have this position here and we have queen f2 and this is absolutely uh, uh, queen f6 this is absolutely a draw here she can go bishop f3 but i prefer her yes to go back and forth i hope before her yes to go back and forth here now and queen f6 and her she anna will go bishop f6 i think so but it's not improving her position it's not improving her position at all so i would just wish anna to go back and forth and we just take the draw here now so she is playing against this very very young boy he is only is born 2012 he's 11 12 years old he's playing very well this is and i cannot win this and i just hope she doesn't win it it's bishop f3 why to let the queen come closer i think there is absolutely no necessary to play like this we come here now and now we need to go something like rook c3 we and there are checks here now oh this is actually getting it a little bit scary this is getting it a little scary no i don't want to see these things i don't want anna to go bishop f3 but i think she will play this i think she want the game 
to be going. But I prefer she doesn't do that. I think she has go. I prefer she goes back, and the game will be a draw. But I think we'll see Bishop F3. No, she went with the King to G2, and I'm just happy she plays that, not making any anything. So he will maybe. I don't think he claims to draw. He's just going. They are going back and forward here, and Anna. He, she brings the back. We had this position before, and if he wants, maybe he wants to claim, it doesn't really matter. But I think he will play queen f6 here now. And I just hope Anna doesn't play bishop f3. It's still a draw, but her king will come a little bit closer. Her, it will just come, her, the other queen will come a little bit closer. So it just doesn't change the result. So let's see if Anna, what she will do. But I just hope she will go king d2 and uh, yes, take the draw, not try to win this position because it's not possible. So Anna is down to 45 seconds. She is thinking, she is thinking, but it's nothing wrong. Uh, we have to play the position we have on the board now, and this position is to draw. So let's say if Anna will take it, what did she do here now? Did she go with the king to g2? I just hope she did that. She went to g2, and now this will be come a draw. I'm just very happy to see that, and he will, I don't know if he will force, I think he will just keep on checking, and he doesn't offer a draw, and <laughs> Anna, I don't know, are they going to go back here, back and forward, they have been here maybe four times already, and if she wants, she can just, uh, so Anna is still thinking, but she will absolutely go back with the king, f1 or f2, it doesn't really matter here. It has been a repetition, it absolutely has been a repetition. If Anna wants, she can claim and go draw, but it's actually black who is uh, having... So, so uh, Anna played, what did she go? She needed, I didn't know where she put the king, she needs to move the way the king. She went to f2 and she offered a draw. And now the game was a draw, she offered a draw, and again, Anna was so close of winning, but she made a mistake, and her mistake was that in some few moves before, when she has the big advantage, her opponent went wrong, she didn't look for if there were some tactics against her king, and she didn't see knight before. Her opponent sacrificed the piece, and he got this perpetual, and th this has been a very, very exciting game where it has been going a little back and forth. Anna has been having a good position, but she has played some dangerous move and then her opponent could get a good position. But Anna was doing very well when she allowed this 94 sacrifice and we have a draw. And you can see that this young boy is doing very well. We will hear from him in the future. I'm absolutely sure about that. And it has been a good fighting game. We can see how both of them have been sitting and uh, almost all the time during the game and, and uh, during the game. And now uh, there was a draw. Both of them are having three out of seven. They are having one, uh, minus one, three out of seven. Anna is scoring um, more or less like her rating. So this is absolutely uh, uh, this is absolutely uh, fine, but she was very close to winning this game, I would say uh, sometimes, but she had also some danger. So she has three out of seven, stay here, and I will come at any moment. She has three out of seven playing in uh, Menorca Open, and you can see how they play. This is not the last position, they are just analyzing, and this is not absolutely the last position, and this absolutely is just... It's absolutely just, just, uh, just a draw. What? But it's not the last position. So it was a perpetual. It was a perpetual, and uh, in the end, and what we are analyzing on the board. So it's not what has happened in the game. So Anna will be here with you in a little moment. We can see how they are speaking about some different moments, and I think actually Anna is thinking of. Uh, I think she's thinking if she could go some rook, uh, I don't know what she's looking at, if she could play. But anyway, the game was a draw, she will be with you at any moment, and 5 o'clock she's going to play the 8th round, with all the players, 8th round in Menorca Open, a huge, huge Open, 360 players, and I play in A group, she and her young opponent, both of them are having 3 out of 7, and there will be the 8th round, 5 o'clock CT time, there will be 9 round at the nine round at um, 
I think it's 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So Anna has three out of seven. She lost the first round. She won the second round. She lost the third round. She won the fourth round. She made a draw in the fifth round. She lost yesterday, but she was close to make a draw against a much higher rated player. And today she had some very good winning chances. In the end, her opponent find this only mode, sacrificing a knight. And in the end, it was a draw. But this is not the last position. This is absolutely not the last position. They had something else on the board when there was a perpetual. Her king couldn't escape the checks from the queen. And here we can see them uh, analyzing. And because they are sitting um, on the board by themselves, the other players are more far away. And then that's why you can analyze a little bit but they forgot to put up the kings first so the first move to analyze is what we have been seeing this was absolutely not the game the game was yes completely different than this and how you claim a draw is actually you are if the same position is coming up for the third time instead of making the move you are you can stop the clock if you have little time you stop the clock and you can tell your opponent, if I play this move, it will be three times. And if your opponent doesn't believe you, you can ask the arbiter to come. They will look at the score sheet or maybe they will look at the digital board and they will see, yes, you are right. Uh, it, has, it will be three times. But if you make the move, then you cannot claim. You cannot say that it will be three times and you make the move. Then it's your opponent to move and your opponent can make something else. And there is no threefold repetition any longer. And here we see how they're sitting and analyzing. And this is what I think is so beautiful. After having played, they have been playing for three and a half hours. You see these games are quite long, three and a half hours. And then afterwards, they are learning from each other. They are absolutely learning from each other. And, and uh, that's, that's something very important. Remember that if you play over the board and uh, if you have time, analyze your games afterwards. In a blitz day, a game is difficult, but maybe some few moves. But when you play longer games, if you have time, analyze afterwards and you will learn from each other. Mm. And we can see how they both are analyzing. But Anna will just come back at any, any moment. She will come and come back. She will come and stay with you at any moment and she will tell you about her thoughts. She will of course be sad she didn't win this but she also see that the boy, this very young opponent she had today that he was playing very nicely and I was very impressed that he could take long thoughts because normally when you're young you want to play very quickly but he was just also taking his time. So Anna has won two games, she has lost three games and she had played two draws in this tournament on Menarca, this huge uh, open tournament. And there are two more games to be going. Anna will probably be black in the evening. This will probably, she will probably be back in the, back, she will be back in the evening and she will probably play black also in the evening and then Probably she will be white tomorrow. But let's see, they are analyzing some things here now. They're absolutely analyzing some things and I don't really know what, what is absolutely happening, what they are looking at and how, how it could be in this position that they're analyzing. Mm -hmm. So this is what you do. If you have time, you sit and analyze after the game and here we can see that uh, that's exactly what they are doing. They are trying to see if there could be some ways uh, to play something better in some, uh, in some moments here. So yeah, this is very, very typical to do. And it's quite nice that you can also see them doing it here. You can absolutely see them doing it here in this position. And I remember once my brother, he's, uh, my brother is an international master. His name is Don Crumling. He's a little bit older than me. And he loves to analyze after the game. And once when he was playing in Beal, I think he played against Grandmaster Suba, who also loved to analyze. So they played the game like five hours, at least five hours. And then they were analyzing like at least two hours afterwards. So they were learning a lot from each other. 
but these things you can only do if you play one game per day. Anna and all her all the players in the tunnel will play another game at five o'clock. It's only like a little more than three hours before the next game. But before that, Anna will come back. Before that, Anna will absolutely come back and and come back. She will come back and stay with you. She will speak about the game, about her thoughts. So just wait a little bit longer. Just wait a little bit longer and Anna will be with you to tell her about her reactions, her ideas and how she feels after the game. But I have been happy to see Anna play some very beautiful moves in the medal game. Very, very nice moves. Sometimes she has gone wrong. She has been a little bit too quick to attack and actually had been a counter attack for her opponent. And finally, this game was a draw. A very exciting fight from both of the players. And both of the players have shown some very, very nice moves. Also gone wrong some ways, but of course we are all human. Of course we go wrong time sometimes, but it has a big drama. It has been a big drama and it ended in a draw. So, uh, so it will just, uh, they're putting back the pieces. You see the kings are standing against each other. Actually, the kings should be on the E file, but they're standing on the D file, I believe. But they can stand against each other. And it's because showing that it has become a draw. Also, if other people are passing by, when you put the kings, you know the result. Even if the players are not there, just looking at the kings, you know what has happened. So Anna will come, it's a little bit to smile, but we, this is probably her, could it be her opponent's father? It could be her opponent's father here, I would guess so. And he, they are, uh, uh, yeah, uh, maybe he's saying that they were analyzing that because it analyzes on the board, something like that, that you could see that. But they, here, here they are, it must be the family and they are absolutely, uh, yeah, now he's speaking about this position. They are absolutely speaking about this position. I don't know in what moment he wanted to do something. And, but it was draw. Anna will come and be with you at any moment. So yes, stay a little bit longer. She will come and speak about the game and her thoughts. So this is Menarca Open. It was the seventh round play. There will be two more games to go. One already today and then the last round tomorrow. Anna, she made a draw and we, I could see that she looked tired. She wasn't so happy about the draw, but it's because she was, uh, she had a very beautiful position, but forgot about her king. And we saw also her opponent, the young opponent and his father, he was coming there, wanted to analyze something. I'm not really sure about what, what it was. But thank you so much for staying at any moment. Anna will come and be here with you. She will be here with you. And I'm also very excited to listen to her. I really love to do that. So for you who like chess, I hope you will be back. Also listen to Anna when she's coming at any moment. Also, also, um, and to be back when Anna will play her eighth round at five o'clock. And those for you who really like chess, there is this candidates going in Toronto and they are playing in Toronto. So they're playing quite late in the evening. And there's also one exciting tournament, but there's so many tournaments around the world to look at. And that's so nice that it's possible to look from home. This was a dream for me long, long time ago. And I remember I was in a tournament in France and there they actually had, we had no live board. We could see the players, we could look at them and we had headphones and we could see the commentators. That was very exciting in the mid nineties, but now with the online boards, we can sit at home and we can see the games and we can even see the players and we can even listen to the players after the games. I think that's just is something very, very beautiful with chess, with the tournaments now. And so let's see, I think Anna will be there at any moment and then I am going to leave you just in some few, few moments. And it will be very exciting to see how many players, how many players are leading the tournament. There were two out of six and five and a half out of six. Now Anna is coming. I will leave you. So thank you so much and stay a little bit longer. Anna will be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.
Hello everyone. Um I thought I saw 94, but I thought I have Kingy 1 worst case, but then I realized that I cannot play Kingy 1. I have to take the knight. And then I don't know if I have any I mean neither me or my opponent could find a win for me there. Um cuz the only thing that I saw was bishop after. I'm going to check with the computer. Um cuz yeah, they they've I've heard that I have a win cuz the dad came in and was like you were winning Anna. Because, <laughs> you know, probably just saw it with stockfish, but I, I didn't I spent like 10 minutes trying to calculate it and I couldn't find it um, Maybe I should have taken the night immediately instead of spending time thinking there But I was already calculating the other line, but I just I couldn't find it um, Yeah, I, I just I couldn't find it even after spending like 10 12 minutes thinking about it like I have I Have no idea what this is <laughs> Your mom saw it too. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised I'm not surprised, but yeah, that's what the dad said at the end. He was like, you are winning, Anna. And I was like, and both me and the kid were like, what? Oh my, I was so, what? Wait, I am so confused. Wait, I'm winning, I'm losing, I'm winning, I'm losing. Wait, what is this game? Ah, put the king in the middle, so. ah, we forgot to put the king in the middle. Ah, ah, okay, so that's why the accuracy went down. Oh, I thought it, okay. I thought it registered. I was trying to put the king in the middle. <laughs> I was I was trying to put the king in the middle, so I thought it registered, but it didn't. <laughs> okay, um, let me. So here we have the position. Wow, I am winning here. King f two, and bishop f three. Yes, yeah, so I saw this. So this I saw. I understood bishop f three. Bishop f three, queen h four. How is the? Excuse me. Excuse me, stockfish. Why do you go from being plus four to zero point zero zero? Um, wait, I am. I I am so confused. Why is this? Uh, yeah, I mean this must be. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm very confused. Okay, so I guess it may be in the beginning of these all of these lines. So this check. So bishop f three here. I'm confused. This is a draw. Yeah, so this is a draw. So after I take the knight, there's no way I win. I win. So f takes e4. And then I thought... Sorry, no. Uh, so king... Ah, king f1. Yeah, because I was going to play king e1. But then I thought queen h3. And then if I, you know, go here, it's a disaster. Because queen h4 check. King f1 here. What? But this is a draw tail. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> what? <laughs> where is it a draw? <laughs> where is the sorry, where is this a win? I don't see where this is a win. Stockfish is draw no, it's a draw, right? Stockfish is messing up. Stockfish at this level is too weak to understand that it's a draw. So I guess the I mean so okay, so I know B7 was a mistake. I understand that B7 is a mistake. Yeah. Like, I think I will run the. Hey okay, guys, we're gonna put a higher level of stockfish because this stockfish is not getting the right moves. Uh, <laughs> this stockfish is drunk. I'm so confused. I mean, you guys are more than welcome to. Yeah, what, what line did my mom show? Because I'm really curious to see how I was winning. I think B7 is my mistake though. I just missed that 94 was so strong. So I was thinking, I was analyzing this with him, with the kid after the game, and I was thinking maybe I should have gone rook C4. Um. Which I'm gonna check now with the engine if that was better. I just b7. I it was the first time in my life I played too fast. <laughs> I played b7 a tempo because I wanted because I just thought it was winning, but then I mean I saw 94, but I was like, no, like I didn't believe in 94 for some reason. I just thought there's no way that that works. And then uh, there was a way that it worked. Man, 94 is is pretty. Um, Okay, so b7, knight e4 check, okay, king f1, so I'm gonna showing, king f1,
Yeah, so, yes. So, knight d2 check. King e1. Okay, so this is, so king f1 actually works. And wait, what happens after king f1? Queen h3 check? Oh, I just go king g1. And after queen h4, I have the move queen b6. Only move. But yeah, this I, this I didn't, this I didn't see. This, I would be lying to the whole world if I said that I saw this. I didn't see this. I thought this was really scary, but I have queen b6 in that line. Wow. Oh, wow. So this is just winning. So I have, yeah, so here, king f1. Queen h3, king g1. So, um, wow, that is really pretty. So knight d2 check. Okay, king f2 is, you know, back and forth. So I have to find king e1 here. And then, okay, something like e4, rooks, <laughs> yeah, wow. I mean, is that the point that both me and him thought this was a draw? Um, and if rooks, wow, yeah, this is really pretty. Um, and, no, rook c8 doesn't work, so I have to find rook c6 or rook c3. Okay, but maybe I don't have to play b7. Maybe this was where it all went wrong. What happens if I play something like rook c4? Ah, then it's not even winning. This is this position is. I thought I was much more winning than I was. B seven ninety four. Yeah, I didn't understand this. King f one. Wow, king f one. Yeah. Yeah, this is maybe the. I had twelve minutes here. Maybe I should have found this, but. Really scary. Ninety two check. What happens if I can I go king g two and then there's queen g six check? What is the difference? Oh, king g one is a draw too. So king e1, this is what I need to find. And then queen f6, rook c8, knight takes f3, bishop takes queen h4 check, king f1, only move, queen h3 check, king g1 takes, takes, and we play out this position, which practically should be winning for me. Okay, wow. Yeah, okay. So this is what I missed. Really pretty. I I I, I missed this. I missed this. Um, yeah. I mean, I thought the game was fine though. I, I was pretty happy with the game. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I could have done before, but I was pretty happy with the game when I was playing it. Like I th I thought all of this was was good. This 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 this. Is Bishop B four good? Oh, it's maybe not the best. Bishop b4. I thought it was pretty. This, this, queen d6, queen a5. I thought it was a nice idea. Okay, everyone. With this, <laughs> I mean, I'm not too upset about this draw. Like, I I just didn't find it. It's worse when it's like yesterday, when I have seen the move that draws and I just don't play it. This, I just didn't see the, the, draw, the winning line. So, honestly, this is not even something I'm too upset about. Um, yeah. So yeah, anyways, um, I have one more game to go today in three hours, 5 p.m. CEST. We have the next round. We're going to give it our very best. I'm just trying to play solid, just not going to lose, just going to, you know, try to win or draw my games. That's that's my goal right now. I'm just trying to play solid. So, so yeah. Um, anyways, people, thank you so much for watching the stream. Thank you for watching the game. I will see you all for round number eight, 5 p.m. CEST. Do not miss it. And also big shout out to my opponent. He's insanely good for being 12 years old. Like, <laughs> I mean, this kid, it's probably the last time I draw him. <laughs> in two years or three years, it'll probably be an IM or something. So, you know, in the future when this guy uh, becomes an IM or a GM, I will be remembering the game where I, where I had to draw. So, you know, insane. Absolutely insane. This kid is insanely good. I mean, he's been performing like a 2100. So, like, this kid is obviously... It's obviously good. Um, but yeah. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for watching the game. And uh, big shout out to my mom as well for the commentary. Big shout out to mods for helping out so much. Big shout out to all of you watching. Thank you guys so much. I will see you all for round number seven.
round number eight. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go have food now because I barely had breakfast before. Bye bye, everyone. See you all later. Bye bye. Take care. Take care. Bye, YouTube. Bye, Twitch. See you in a few hours. Bye bye. Bye bye.